Well, ho, ho, hello. It's your old pal, Bo Ranstall, with a voice brought to you by The Flu, welcoming you to a new season of Pick 6 Movies. And if this is your first time with us, let me fill you in on our particular brand of holiday cheer. In between eggnog-induced blackouts, my best pal, Chad Cooper, and I spend precious moments of our lives sifting through some of the worst movies on God's wintry earth to select six of these reindeer droppings and wrap them together in a theme. This season, 23 if you're keeping score at home, is called Stream On, and we are looking at six straight-to-streaming misadventures. If it premiered on Netflix, you know it's got to be good. Now that we have our sextet of films, we craft an introduction to give you a little context for these movies, and then we sit down and fill these movie stockings with coal and scorn. So sit back, watch the snow come down, and prepare yourself for what promises to be an arctic vortex of a season, starting with a made-for-Netflix movie all about amnesiacs and Christmas. Wait, did we write this one? I guess we'll see. Take it away, Chad. All right, we're back in the studio again. Hey, Alan. Thank you for coming in. Is nobody here this week? Happy holidays, Alan. I always say happy holidays as a microaggression against those uptight conservative types. I know. No, no. Haven't the Christians suffered enough here in the United States? What with that stack Supreme Court and all those gerrymandered voting districts? <laughs> Just boggles the mind. All right. Um, did you leave? The, did you leave me this package? Uh, well, hold on. There's a name. There's a card on it. Hang on. Let me read this. I'll read it out loud like they do in the movies, so you can hear what it says. <laughs> Dear Chad. <clears throat> Oh, it's from Garrett, the the intern. Oh, dear Chad, I was inspired by Gabe the pervert, oh God, in the movie Child's Play. I don't know if I want to keep reading this. And I decided to take apart and rebuild that piece of junk that I found in the trash under your desk. So here it is for you, a Festivus for the rest of us present. Happy holiday season. Love, Garrett the lovable weirdo intern from season 22. <laughs> Garrett the intern did something. Let's see what's in <laughs> let's see what's inside this thing. Oh my god. Alan, do you know what this is? <laughs> You're in for a treat. <laughs> what? Where am I? Is this robot heaven? Oh shit, it's you, human number one. I must be in robot hell. <laughs> it's Pick 6 Mutt! The foul-mouthed answer to Amazon's Alexa has returned to the Pick 6 Studios! <laughs> yes, and it looks like you've been returning to the Golden Corral Buffet. Let me guess, they rescinded your lifetime ban for drinking directly from the hot fudge fountain in this post-COVID-19 world. <laughs> Look, Bo dared me to go over and sploosh the chocolate into my mouth and shout out, I'm Augustus Gloop. It was a $50 bet and I won and I won that bet. The real winners of that bet were the obese patrons watching you get tossed into the back seat of that police cruiser with chocolate covered paws. <laughs> Look, those charges, those charges were dropped. Well, most of them anyway. So you and human number two still reviewing bad movies on your sad little podcast? Yes, we are. And this is the start of a brand new season. And it's called St Stream On featuring six movies all made for streaming services. I am connected to the internet. I have all known knowledge available to me along with countless conspiracy theories and a shocking amount of pornography i heard you tease the new season's theme two weeks ago oh you listen to our podcast i enjoy the voice of human number two it soothes me his voice has an asmr quality to it unlike your voice which sounds like it is more accustomed to fighting its way around a half chewed bacon eight or triple decker cheeseburger from wendy's speaking of food there appears to be some food on your chin did i get did i get it off no it is lower down on your third chin. <laughs> oh, big six one. I missed you. Hey, you want to help me do the introduction to this week's movie? We can do it together. What in our history together makes you think I would want to do that? Like, look, it's the holidays. A time for friendship and peace on earth. Goodwill toward men and women and uh, snarky robots like you. Human number one. You do make a good point. Plus, seeing as you're pregnant. <laughs> I'm not pregnant. Oh, how embarrassing for you. Are you sure you're not pregnant? <laughs> yes! I'm, I'm sure I'm not pregnant! Maybe you should speak to a doctor just to be sure. I'm not pregnant! <laughs> I'm not! <laughs> Human number one, the only thing stopping you from getting an informed medical opinion is the door. 
All of this is based on the fact that over the last few months you have grown shockingly large. <laughs> I I understand what you're saying, Big Six Spot. You know what? Let's just start the intro to this movie that's all about a woman who gets clocked on the head and loses her memory. Wish I could get clocked on the head and forget who Big Six Spot is. Human number one, you are very emotional. Have your breasts become tender and swollen? Are you nauseous? <laughs> I've heard that inside every fat person is someone beautiful. Perhaps the beautiful person inside you is a baby. To labor the point, haha, pun intended, this is all because your stomach is so big and it appears that you are with child. You're so mean. I missed you so much. Alan, play me some holiday music so I can start up this intro. When you hear the term movie trope, you might think to yourself that this is something that lazy screenwriters do to slap together a script the night before their assignment is due. But nothing could be further from the truth, except the fact that I'm not pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Tropes and movies are just thematic storytelling devices that communicate something figurative to the audience. They could be a physical object or an action taken by a character that has a broader and deeper meaning. And tropes serve as shortcuts to help the audience understand the situation. One of the most famous tropes of them all is the MacGuffin, a term associated with the works of Alfred Hitchcock. But it actually originated with screenwriter Angus MacPhail, who worked closely with Hitchcock. The MacGuffin is an object of desire in a film used to advance the plot. That, by the end of the third act, really has no significance to the overarching story. The Maltese Falcon, that briefcase from Pulp Fiction, the rug from The Big Lebowski, they're all MacGuffins. And a MacGuffin is an example of a movie trope. Now, perhaps it's most important to understand movie tropes by also understanding what they are not, because movie tropes are not the same as a cliche. Tropes are things, people, or situations with this figurative meaning. However, a cliche in a movie is something that audiences expect to happen. Tropes are the storytelling devices. If you overuse these devices in predictable ways, well, now you find yourself in cliche country, and that's all too familiar and lacking in originality. Tropes are neither good nor bad, and I'd argue that cliched screenplay writing is neither good or bad depending on the goal of your screenplay. Hallmark and Lifetime have capitalized on tropes and cliches in hundreds of holiday-themed romantic movies that follow a pattern filled with women from the big city finding true love in the charm of a small town during the most wonderful time of the year. The tropes in these holiday romantic films usually include a female protagonist coming back to her small town for Christmas. There's a misunderstanding about characters' relationships, romantic or otherwise. Perhaps there's a holiday competition. Perhaps someone is in need of a career change. Perhaps there are some kids that want to play matchmaker for a handsome single parent. And there's oftentimes the inclusion of some holiday magic to give the movie that something supernatural and super special that it needs. These are all tropes. They can be used effectively or they can be overused in ways that we've seen again and again and thus becoming a cliche in storytelling. Cliches in the genre of holiday romantic comedies include a female protagonist, ex showing up unannounced, the it's not what you think moment where one character misinterprets the words or actions of another character. Another example is that the handsome guy in the expensive suit is a jerk. Unlike the guy in the jeans and the flannel shirt, he's kind-hearted and dreamy. Small town life is better than big city life. All of these things are cliches that are found in these holiday romantic comedies. Now, screenwriters can also up their game by throwing in some extremely cliched moments. Perhaps a pregnant woman goes into labor during the finale of the film and chaos ensues. Perhaps one person pretends to be twins in an attempt to avoid the consequences of a lie. You know, by lying more. Maybe you could throw in a gay best friend or a lesbian best friend, or heck, any non-binary best friend. You could give one of your romantic leads lingering grief associated with the untimely death of a parent. Ooh, or both parents, oh, or maybe their spouse, oh, or their child, oh my God. <laughs> Look, you do what you gotta do to make these two incredibly attractive people fall in love at Christmas. Or you could just do the most cliched of cliched screenwriting cliches and just completely rip off another movie, set it in a different location, change it just enough so that you don't get sued, and such is the case in the focus of this episode, Falling for Christmas. Amnesia in a movie is an example of a movie trope. It is a framework that can be used to tell a story well or to tell a story unwell. Amnesia is complicated and there are multiple types of amnesia. Interograde amnesia is the inability to create new memories, which is what happened in Memento and 51st Dates. I like both those movies. 
In the original Hangover, the wolf pack suffers from a drug-induced amnesia. I like that movie, and I've also had a drug-induced amnesia. In The Notebook, Allie has complete memory loss due to the effects of Alzheimer's. Didn't see it, don't have it, I don't think. <laughs> In The Born Identity, Jason Bourne experiences a dissociative fugue state that causes the loss of memory about his own identity. But in most movies, it's retrograde amnesia that is more often than not the amnesia of choice. Retrograde amnesia is the inability to recall things that happened in the past before an event took place. Usually that event is something traumatic, maybe a bump on the head or something psychological that shakes you up. That's what happened to Harrison Ford in regarding Henry after he got shot in the head during a robbery. It also happened to Kermit the Frog after he got run over by a taxi cab in Muppets Take Manhattan. And it also happened to Goldie Hawn who fell off a boat in the aptly titled Overboard. Overboard was a 1987 romantic comedy starring everybody's favorite long-term couple that refuses to get married, Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell. The movie is the story of a rich heiress, Goldie Hawn, who hires then refuses to pay handsome carpenter Kurt Russell for some craft work he did on her fancy yacht. Goldie Hawn gets amnesia after she falls off of the aforementioned yacht and she is saved. Kurt Russell, who is a widower with four rambunctious boys, recognizes Goldie Hawn from the yacht and decides to take her into his home to pay off the debt that she owes him for all that carpentry work. It's not as creepy as it sounds and it's a pretty entertaining romantic comedy from director Gary Marshall who went on to bring us the films Pretty Woman and Beaches. Two incredibly successful movies, the former about prostitutes and the second about a woman dying of cancer. Overboard originally wasn't a box office hit when it was released but it became a cult classic due to its availability on cable TV movie channels. The movie was so popular, it was remade as a Hindi film titled Ekladka Ekladki. Remakes were produced in Malaysia, Switzerland, and a South Korean TV show titled Couple or Trouble was based on the movie Overboard. And in Russia, a very loose adaptation titled Wife Rented came out. <laughs> that all sounds about right. In 2018, Anna Faris starred in a remake of the original film, but here the gender of the two leads were reversed and it was Ferris who takes in a wealthy man that fell off of his yacht and got a case of amnesia. And it's just this trope turned cliche that the makers of Falling for Christmas decided to completely rip off, set in a different location, and change just enough not to get sued for the triumphant return of Lindsay Lohan to the world of acting in a major motion picture that would be streamed on Netflix. Lindsay Lohan was born in New York City. She started her acting career on the soap opera Another World when she was 10 years old. She was eventually cast in the 1998 remake of the Disney film The Parent Trap, and from there her success really took off. She made a few other smaller movies, but then appeared in the 2000 remake of the Disney film Freaky Friday, where mother and daughter swap bodies. Here, Lindsay Lohan starred alongside Jamie Lee Curtis. Lindsay Lohan played the daughter and Jamie Lee Curtis played the mom until they swapped bodies. And then the mom was the daughter and the daughter was the mom. <laughs> Next came Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen. And then in 2004, the movie Mean Girls established Lindsay Lohan as one of Hollywood's most popular actresses. Not content to just be a movie star, Lindsay Lohan released two studio albums, one of which, Speak, was certified platinum. Lohan wrapped up her three-picture deal with Disney and starred in Herbie Fully Loaded. You can hear all about that on season 10, episode five, where we reviewed that movie. Then Lindsay Lohan decided she was gonna take on some more adult roles to broaden her range. During filming of the movie Georgia Rule in 2006, there were reports of her having some personal struggles, and that was the beginning of the parade of bad tabloid headlines for years to come. Lindsay Lohan entered rehab facilities. There were family struggles involving her mother and father. Her romantic relationships were on full display, including her dating that 70s show star, Wilder Valderrama, as well as DJ Samantha Ronson. In 2012, she attempted to get her acting career back on track, starring as actress Elizabeth Taylor in the biopic Liz and Dick. She also appeared in The Canyons, where Lindsay Lohan appeared in the movie, participating in an orgy. These two movies were not well received by critics and fans alike. Lindsay Lohan went on to do some reality TV. She did a little stage work here and there, but for about 10 years, she avoided making another major motion picture. 
That was until she signed a multi-picture deal with Netflix. The first of which was the romantic comedy Falling for Christmas. As mentioned earlier, Falling for Christmas is a holiday-themed ripoff of Overboard. Now, when Bo gets here in a few minutes, we're going to talk about this in way too much detail. The movie itself was written by Ron Oliver, who has a writing credit on the film Hello, Mary Lou, Prom Night 2, and a bunch of episodes of Goosebumps and Are You Afraid of the Dark? Oliver also has a lot of writing credits on made-for-TV Christmas movies, including Hope at Christmas, Christmas Everlasting, A Timeless Christmas. You get the idea. Responsibilities for the writing of this movie also fell on Jeff Bonnet, who was a production assistant back in the day on that NBC superhero series, Heroes. Falling for Christmas was directed by Janine Damien, and it was her directorial debut, having most recently produced the films Love by Design, The Christmas Waltz, and Much Ado About Christmas. She seemed like a great pick to sit in the director's chair. Why not? Cord Overstreet was cast to play the hunky small town lead in the movie. Overstreet was best known for his role as Sam Evans on the Fox musical TV series Glee. Jack Wagner, who your grandmother may recognize from the TV soap opera The Bold and the Beautiful, plays Lohan's father in the movie. And other than that, you're really not going to recognize anybody else in this thing. And why would you? The movie was really just the return of Lindsay Lohan to feature filmmaking on Netflix. It was a safe, soft, silly romantic comedy set at Christmas. It provided an opportunity for Lohan to not take herself too seriously and knock the rust off of her comedic acting skills. Lohan was not only the star of the movie, but she also got executive producer credit on the film, which may be why her sister, Aliana Lohan, shows up as Bianca. Really? She's in this? Mm. Plus, it gave Netflix some news to talk about as the competitive landscape of streaming services kept getting more and more crowded day by day. The movie was shot in Deer Valley near Park City, Utah, and production wrapped up in just a little over a month in November and December of 2021. Netflix began promoting the movie and their working relationship with Lindsay Lohan as early as February of 2022. In October of 2022, trailer was released, and on November 10th, the movie debuted on Netflix. How well did it do? Well, with streaming services, it's more challenging to gauge the success of a movie when compared to box office ticket sales. Over on Rotten Tomatoes, the movie ekes out a freshness score of 61% when it comes to critics, but comes up short of a freshness rating at 59% when it comes to audience reviews. Rotten Tomatoes actually placed Falling for Christmas as the 90th best Christmas movie that they have ranked. It is one step behind the Illumination animated film, Dr. Seuss's The Grinch, and it is two slots ahead of The Polar Express. This list is <laughs> woefully flawed. The movie debuted at number one on Netflix's most watched movies after it came out, whatever that means. Netflix said that the film had the fourth biggest opening weekend for a Netflix original since May of 2022, and it had the best start for an English-speaking film released on a Thursday on Netflix. What does any of that mean? I don't know. All right. <laughs> IndieWire's Samantha Burgesson said, the movie features Lindsay Lohan's career best work in years, and she called it the Citizen Kane of Netflix Christmas movies. Wait, Lohan had made a movie in 10 years. What does is, what is the Citizen Kane of Netflix Christmas movies even mean? Good God. All right. The, <laughs> most movie critics praise Lindsay Lohan's performance as light and campy and fun. Luke Thompson over with the AV Club said, It's silly, sitcom-y, and impossible to call good. The Falling for Christmas is the kind of bad that feels almost appealing. After the film's release, Lohan thanked all of her fans and their positive reaction to the movie, stating, I can't begin to tell everyone how grateful I am for this incredible moment. To all of the fans and longtime believers in me, I appreciate you. My heart is filled with so much love and gratitude. Thank you, Netflix, for letting me bring this story to life with such a wonderful cast, director, producers, and crew. And fans were thrilled to hear that Lindsay Lohan would return with the same director at the helm of her second romantic comedy for Netflix, a movie titled Irish Wish, which is set to debut in 2023. On that movie, Lohan reportedly plays a woman whose best friend is marrying Lohan's true love. Lindsay Lohan makes a wish and she wakes up the next day as the bride, but only to discover that her soulmate 
is somebody else entirely. Pop some corn, I'm opening the Merlot, and I will meet you on the couch. Boom. Well, until that comes out, I need to get Bo in here so we can get straight to our work and fill up this episode and not sound like jerks. Laying a finger aside of my nose and giving a nod signals the start of the show. Let's spring to our seats and our teams give a whistle. I've no idea what's meant by the down of a thistle, but you'll hear us exclaim ere we review this movie tonight. Falling for Christmas for all starts now. A good night. Human number one. That's how you're ending the introduction, with a butchered reworking of Clement Clark Moore's poem A Visit from St. Nicholas. I did not predict that you would finish like that. <laughs> really? How did you think I was going to end the introduction? With a half-eaten meatball parmigiana sub in one hand, slumped over your computer asleep on the desk. <laughs> oh, I missed you, Pick Six Bot. And I'm not pregnant. Give Bowen here. If you're looking for names, human number three has a nice <laughs> ring to it. <laughs> And welcome to Pick 6 Movies. I'm Chad Cooper, and as always, I am joined by the man who is so easy to fall for, especially at Christmas, Mr. Bo Ransdell. Bo, how are you doing today? Wait, who are you? What is this show? What are we doing? <laughs> Thunk. Oh, I'm better now. Hey, Chad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's not the first time you've thrown a shoe at my head, nor should it be the last. And that's something I look forward to during the recordings, quite frankly. You know what? It's almost a new year. This episode is landing on or around Christmas Eve. I don't know. Yeah, it'll be close. Everybody here at the studio took their vacation earlier. It's just you and me and Alan, our sound engineer in the booth. Everybody's gone. I feel like John Cryer working the overnight shift at Target and Career Opportunities, which makes you, Jennifer Connolly, riding that coin-operated mechanical horse in that tight white tank top. Uh-huh. <laughs> See my boobs bounce. I keep waiting for Garrett the enter to like lift up up a hatch from beneath the floor as if he is now haunting the Pixic Studios. Yeah, who knows? We're never going to see you. The Phantom of the Podcast, if that hasn't been done yet, <laughs> trademark. Posted by Garrett the Intern. Yeah, g- yeah. Give, it a, give it a couple of weeks. He'll come in and dish dirt on all of the things that he saw around here. <laughs> Look, none of us need that. And honestly, if Garrett wants to work in this podcast town again, he'll know to keep his mouth shut. This is a new season. Yeah. Here's a, here's the thing. I'm glad we are not doing a season of Christmas movies. Sure. Because after watching this one, uh-huh. I don't believe that Christmas is a good idea anymore i don't think this is a christmas movie really there's a santa there's a, a straight oh, yeah, up santa, santa in this in movie this. doing christmas magic <laughs> i hope whoever wrote my notes did a better job than, than what i put to memory hey, hang on once hey, hang on one second alan alan did you write the santa stuff in chad's notes yeah okay i'm getting a thumbs up from alan <laughs> that yes you once we get to the scene, you will be aware that there is a Santa performing Christmas miracles. I watched this movie once, I think. I'll tell you, here's the good thing about doing streaming movies uh, as we are this season. Right. Is the ones we do on Netflix, the first time through, I can just watch it and see what's uh, up, right? That's kind of kind of a little peek behind the curtain of how Pick 6 movies works. We generally watch the movie one time on our own just to get a sense of it. Right. And, and start to think about, like, is this really good? How are we going to make fun of this <laughs> if it's really bad? <laughs> then we do the second pass, which is where they do the notes. But on the second pass, Netflix has that, like, hey, watch the movie at one and a half speed speed oh really yes so you can cut through the second viewing lickety split i did not know that was a thing i appreciate you telling me that because that's what i'm going to do on that first viewing Going <laughs> yeah it, i'm telling you it made it much more palatable when you watch the you know falling i keep wanting to call it falling into christmas it's falling for christmas mm-hmm. If you watch Fall In For Christmas and it only takes half as long to get through, it's a much more tolerable movie. I disagree. You shouldn't watch this one at all. Let's jump into it and we'll explain why. First off, I want to say that this movie is supposed to be a romantic comedy, but it's not very romantic and it is not funny. Well, it's not funny on purpose. It's (laughs) unintentionally hilarious. But at its core, it's not a comedy. 
there's no chemistry between the leads. There's no reason they should be falling for each other. It really feels more like an arranged marriage type of situation. And at the end, they have to hold hands. <laughs> yeah, it it's like if you threw overboard a hint of It's a Wonderful Life and a very nutty Christmas all into a blender and mixed it up. This is what comes out. The lack of humor in this movie is best found in the end credits, which are full of this oh. cannonball run style outtakes, but they're not funny. It's just like someone going to drink from a glass and there's a straw that kind of touches their cheek and they're like, cut, do it again. <laughs> like, right. Whoa. Yeah. Or just flubbing a line or something. And you're like, that's not funny but they don't flub it in a funny way you know what i mean it's like hey let's go into the fuck house oh fun house ah, and they get the giggles they're like oh okay i can see that it's like we need to go downtown and get our shoes it's uptown sorry about that okay we need to go uptown <laughs> and get our shoes let me give you an example of when flubby a line is funny it harkens back to one of our early movies the cannibal run uh -huh. and it's the sammy davis jr and dean martin dressed up as priests yeah sammy davis jr says i'm gonna take these bleeds referring to his rosary beads and dean martin goes these bleeds these bleeds right here and just kind of running with <laughs> the mispronunciation and it's a it's kind of a funny bit you're like dean martin even when drunk as he certainly was while making the cannibal run is very funny and sammy davis jr kind of gives as good as he gets in in that moment but like that is how flubbing a line makes a good outtake but hearing jake from falling for christmas say like you said uptown instead of downtown and then you just hear somebody bored off screen go cut i love being around people who are genetically missing a sense of humor and they don't know it which is different from people <laughs> that i don't find funny because humor is subjective mm -hmm. i'm talking about a condition where people like do not understand humor or comedy at all it's like being colorblind but for humor and there was a guy that i worked with once and he was like this and i love being around him because he was so weird he came up to me one day at work and he said you're never gonna believe who i ran into the other day denise it was hilarious and i was like what happened he was like i was at the grocery store and i saw denise and she came up and said hey tell chad i said hi why, there's nothing funny about that at all. No. Why you would describe this encounter as hilarious is what someone who doesn't understand, even at its broadest description, <laughs> what mm -hmm. humor is. I mean, it's like somebody telling you, like, you, hey, you, you want to hear something funny? Sure, sure, sure. Um, you know, my uncle and my aunt both died within a week of each other, <laughs> but it was different sides of the family. And you're like, well, that's not funny. That's just tragic. <laughs> Your assessment of what makes a joke is way off base. What's funny is that the cops never caught me. <laughs> <laughs> right right despite the multiple notes i left and the fact that i was always behind the police line at the crime scene just observing waving and pointing at my face and the trophies that i have in my basement fingers toes teeth all the dna <laughs> right. you would need to solve this type of crime if they just came over to my basement i would be behind bars the world's such a funny place that is funny <laughs> say is that denise don't chat i said hello that's hilarious Let's get into this movie. It's an easy 89 minutes, which is nice if we get rid of the cannonball run credits at the end. And it starts off when we get some drone shots or maybe stock footage of the snowy mountains of Utah. And then we're immediately given the title of our movie, Falling for Christmas. Because she falls down a mountain bow and she falls in love. Also, we get, you know, production credits. Uh -huh from the MPCA, the Motion Picture Company of America, which <laughs> which is one of the most official sounding but simultaneously completely worthless company names I've ever heard. We start off in Lindsay Lohan. She is sleeping in a fancy bed. There appears to be some lovely linens wrapping her, and she's wearing a sleep mask, Bo. Now, in movies, when a character wears a sleep mask, that signifies that they're probably rich, because you never see mm -hmm. poor people people in a movie wearing a sleep mask poor people instead wear gloves with missing fingers what's funny is sleep masks aren't that expensive and who needs a good night's sleep more than poor people because the stress that they have in their <laughs> lives thinking about 
about money all the time. Have you ever seen a movie where a poor person is wearing a sleep mask? No, it doesn't happen, but I, I'm just saying it should. All right. The phone rings and Lindsay Lohan, she rolls over and picks it up. And the voice on the other end of the phone says, good morning, Lindsay Lohan. This is your wake up call. The temperature is 35 degrees. And Lindsay Lohan just interrupts this woman and goes, goodbye, click. The movie wants to let us understand right away that she is a terrible person. Are wake up calls at hotels still a thing that people feel a need to call guest services and say, hey, tomorrow morning when whoever's on the AM shift comes in. You have them call me and wake me up because I'm too lazy to set the alarm clock in this room or something on my phone to get my ass out of bed. Well, it doesn't work that way anymore, though, because it's all automated. Uh, Like, you can set a wake-up call. I've done that before, but it's just an automated call that's like... This is your wake-up call for Mr. (laughs) Ryerson. I think I'd like a wake-up call that's like, Good morning. You should really think about what you're doing with your life. Get your shit together. Click. (laughs) Congratulations on waking up. Here's hoping you make it through another day. Lindsay Lohan, she sits up with a remote and she smacks a button and the shades on the window open up for this hotel room. And we see outside and there's a bunch of foam on the ground trying to pretend to be snow in front of this resort. This is the Belmont Summit Resort. In reality, it's the Goldener Hirsch Hotel in Park City, Utah. But in this movie, the filmmakers went to great lengths to put up one thin plastic banner that says Belmont Summit Resort. It's it's like they're in between ownership. Like the real sign hasn't come in yet. <laughs> it looks like a maroon version of a sign you would see promoting fireworks for sale. Although they're real proud of this infinity pool. Oh my god. This pool is in this movie almost as much as some of the characters. Yeah, I mean, easily as much as Jake. We cut to this stretch limo, and it's a Humvee, and they did put a sticker on the side that says Belmont Summit Resort. So I guess you buy the banner, you get the car magnet. And uh, we meet Tad, and he's our Mr. Wrong in this unromantic non-comedy. How to describe Tad? He is if, like, Instagram had a baby with Austin Powers. That's a great way of putting it, yeah. Because he's that kind of Euro trash social influencer is the character they're going for. Right. But it's just like, hey, Lindsay Lohan, it's me, Tad. Yeah, baby. Also, when Tad's in this Humvee, he's clearly on a set with a green screen behind him, showing the snowy road disappearing in the background. It's like some old 50s rear screen projection with a couple of gangsters out running the coppers. This is bad. The the big, you know, scene where Lindsay Lohan eventually has her accident. Spoilers, Lindsay Lohan's going to have an accident in a minute. That is the one that's like, oh, this looks awful. (laughs) Somebody should have talked to him about this. Tad's on the phone in this limo, and he's using earbuds to make his call. And Tad says, yeah, baby, just tell your father you don't want to be on the job. And before you can think, who is this guy and who is he talking to? We cut back to Lindsay Lohan in her hotel room and she's on the phone. Tad's talking to Lindsay Lohan and Lindsay Lohan says, he flew me up here on his private jet at Christmas and I don't want to hurt his feelings. And your first thought is who flew you on their private jet? (laughs) And who are Mm -hmm. you talking about? More importantly, who are you, Lindsay Lohan? What is going on in this movie, Bo? Do we need to answer this question? Because the movie does a terrible job of it. Before we can answer any of these questions, Lindsay Lohan just instinctively walks over and opens the door to her hotel room where five people are just standing outside. And my first thought is that they were there to toss her ass out because her credit card was declined. But sadly, no, this does not happen. Instead, the primary hotel employee says, ha, ha. I'm Terry from Guest Services. Your father asked me to work as your personal assistant while you're here. And this is your glam squad. If you were in a hotel, Mm though, and a gay man, because this is Terry, and he is a Mm -hmm. stereotypical gay man from Central Mm Cast, shows up at your hotel with four people that are announced as a glam squad, what would (laughs) you have them do or what would you expect them to do? I mean, Manny Petty at minimum. Also, maybe a face mask? I'd have them play Russian roulette, but the bullet would be a blank. I just want to see who's committed. Oh, that's a good idea. (laughs) Test their loyalty. I also just randomly rearrange stuff in the room. (laughs) Put the couch over there. Put the bed over there. Put the bed in the toilet. You two trade shoes. You two fall in love. (laughs) 
<laughs> Lindsay Lohan, she's on the phone and she says, look, I don't want to be in the hotel business, but my daddy wouldn't understand. As far as he's concerned, this is the perfect career for me. He said that I'm going to be the vice president of atmosphere. Honestly, it sounds like a job that my dad made up for me so that he can just pay me a salary and keep things nice and legal. And I was like, this sounds awesome, Lindsay Lohan. I would take that job in a second and I would do nothing for the rest of my life. Or whatever you want to do, right? Like, you don't have any workplace responsibilities. Right. You want to write novels under the name Lindsay James from now on? <laughs> do that. You want to take up skydiving? Do that and just bank this money. While she's having this conversation, the glam squad starts going into their routine. They're bringing her caviar, you know, Bo, because that's what rich people eat. Not like those poor people who eat fish from the trash can that has the head still attached to the full body of bones that they serve it on the metal lid of a trash can uh huh. <laughs> that's what the poor people eat with their no glove fingers you're either poor or you're a cat that lives <laughs> in an alley and has wacky adventures also i don't know what time of day it is and you, you would assume it's early morning but who knows it might be mid-afternoon they don't establish that someone brings Lindsay lohan a flute of champagne because she just woke up and one mm -hmm. member of the glam squad puts it to her lips so that she can drink her morning booze. Yeah, she kind of gives it the head <laughs> nod, too, of like, hey, you know, champagne me. <laughs> Do you have a straw? Do you have two straws? <laughs> God damn it, that's a swizzle stick. I want a straw. You know what they say, a little hair of the dog. And I had a whole St. Bernard last <laughs> night. <laughs> Lindsay Lohan is just taking all of this glam squad routine in stride, even though she's just met these people. And Lindsay Lohan, she goes on to say, look, when people look at me, all they see is the spoiled daughter of Beauregard Beaumont. Ted, I need your help. I want to make my own mark in the world. And so instead of taking a made-up job from her father, she's looking to another man to help her make a difference in the world. Mm -hmm. Well, what would you expect from the spoiled adult daughter of Beauregard Beaumont? Ski resort hotel bajillionaire. Dude, the exposition dump in this scene. Because not only do we get, you know, I'm the spoiled daughter of Beauregard Beaumont. The flip side of that is Ted is like, don't worry, baby, because you know I'm the biggest social influencer in the world snapchat yeah oh god this is gonna be a rough ride <laughs> it's so terrible <laughs> he, he does ask her yeah baby he says how are your socials and Lindsay lohan goes oh they're a mess you remember that girl who hacked my accounts well i'm never gonna bring that up again in the movie and it doesn't matter but do you remember that why does that exist in the movie it really it doesn't ever come out it, it's one of those things that you keep expecting to play some kind of a role in this no, no. but oh the writing of this is so bad that says yeah baby after we have lunch with your father let's hit the slopes and we'll take some ussies for instagram Lindsay lohan says i just want people to remember me for more than my last name tad says oh behave i've got to go time to post a selfie from the back of this limo and Lindsay lohan responds okay i love click hello hello yeah and then tad's gone and then one of the members of her glam squad her name is bianca who is <laughs> Lindsay lohan's real life sister eliana and she says bad connection and Lindsay lohan says yeah you could say something like that and then we cut to the ski slopes of utah and we see our movie's handsome love interest jake and he's whipping down the slopes and he skis over to Lindsay lohan's dad who is also out for an early morning run down the ski slopes is that how you say it bo uh-huh I'm, I'm glad you asked me because clearly i'm the <laughs> ski professional here so yes you've got more experience than than i do meaning that you've fallen down more hills covered in snow than i have i ate it real good <laughs> within the past six weeks and it wasn't even snow it was just wet and there were a lot of leaves on the ground That'll do it. and i did one of those like feet come out from under you <laughs> kind of falls where there's no pinwheeling or anything it just you go from fully standing to landing hard on one side in one swift motion. I think that's called the Marv. <laughs> right. <laughs> it was, I hit and it like kind of knocked the wind out of me. Totally unexpected. I just, all of a sudden I was on the ground, right? And then I started just cackling laughing because it had been so long since I fell and just ate it that hard. <laughs> You're going to say like, because this is the, mo this is how I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the earth giving you a hug and I'm lonely, Chad. <laughs> cause of death gravity and leaves 
right. <laughs> yeah. Poor, poor decision in shoes. <laughs> Jake skis over to Lindsay Lohan's dad and he says, hey, Mr. Beauregard, I'm Jake. I own the, and Lindsay Lohan's dad interrupts him, North Star Lodge, my secretary mentioned that you called 15 times. If you want to talk to me, Lindsay Lohan's dad, you'll have to race me unnecessarily to the bottom of this hill. And so these two race down the hill and at the last minute, Jake pulls back to let Lindsay Lohan's dad win. And during the race, Bo, there is some laughably bad green screenshots of these actors <laughs> pretending to ski it looked like the dean jones classic the snowball express 80s boob comedy ski school has far more convincing skiing in that movie than does this i would even go so far as to say better off dead a better ski film than this movie said because they film people skiing yes here this looks like something from saturday night live where it's just a fan and a bunch of shaved up <laughs> shipping container peanuts yes this is the equivalent of like two us the skiing cat in terms of quality but when they get to the bottom of this hill and as you said jake kind of lets him win beauregard beaumont is like come along jake we can walk and talk have you ever seen the west wing we're going to be doing that and they walk into this like super lodge that beaumont owns uh -huh. and jake says whoa this looks like something out of SpaceX, <laughs> which like I had to take my left hand to pry my right thumb off of the remote to keep from stopping this movie right then. His pitch is terrible to this man because he's like, hey, I've got a great idea. If you look in this packet, you'll see that poor people stay at ski lodges. And then when they get rich, they stay at nice lodges like this. Not the kind of shithole that I run. But here's the thing. We're going to see in a minute, the lodge he runs is seriously worth hundreds of millions of dollars. It is one of the nicest, coziest <laughs> lodges I've ever seen. Like the way that they tried to dress this down is to have one thing fall off of a sleigh one time. <laughs> We'll get to it, but when you see the lodge, you see it's got a horse stall, Chad. It's got a horse stall, and this horse's name is engraved in wood, and it's not dirty and rickety. It's one of those things like where cats inherit mansions. It's like this horse inherited the guest house, and they just opened up a window with all the millions that they're generating from this lodge. But while he's making this stupid pitch about his perfectly fine lodge that doesn't need any work or help, he does tell him, uh, I just think, uh, I think you need to add like a electric ski lift and maybe some hot tubs. That'd be really cool, right? And Lindsay Lohan's dad's like, let me stop you there, boy. Uh, no, have a cup of hot chocolate and be on your way. He does say, though, I thought it was quite classy that you let me win, Jake. Which is also the least classy thing you can do <laughs> is to take a dive, in my opinion. But if you are a truly competitive person, unless your ego is so fragile, you can't deal with the fact that a younger, faster person beat you in a ski race like if the guy beats you like you beat me fair and square you got that competitive edge you got that fire in your belly i'm gonna work with this guy <laughs> he's just an ass kissing yes man he's a sycophant so then we cut to Lindsay lohan who is coming out of the elevator in the lobby of this spacex resort mm -hmm. i should point out that this is the point that my girlfriend stopped watching the movie i'm surprised you made it this far i, I was too but she looks up because she was looking at her phone the entire time as she should have been yeah Yes. And looks up and is like, that is the worst dress I've ever seen in my life. I'll be in the other room. What is the dress? It's either red or it's green. It's the only colors anyone wears in this movie. It's this red dress with like a bow at the midriff. Like, I, again, I'm no, you know, pay on a fashion, but my girlfriend was beside herself. Like, she has mentioned this dress no less than five times since we watched this movie. You should buy it for her. <laughs> I was like, you uh, you didn't stick around for the west, rest of the movie if you had seen that. Like, there are bigger affronts to God than that dress in this film. <laughs> Lindsay Lohan's coming out in this dress that your girlfriend just absolutely hates. And then Jake took his free hot cocoa, which I call it hot chocolate. I don't call it hot cocoa. And I don't trust people that call it hot cocoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He comes around the corner and through a series of highly contrived events, bumps into Lindsay Lohan, spilling a dollop of whipped cream onto this dress that your girlfriend hates. And then mm -hmm. Tad shows up, our social media influencer boyfriend, to clean off this white goop that's up on Lindsay Lohan's right breast. And then two security guards show up to ask, is everything all right? And Tad says, I'm a little flustered, baby, but yeah, I'm all right. And it's like that. That is the extent of how funny this movie gets. 
Right. Tad is really the only comedic character and the only time comedy is employed in this movie. Lindsay Lohan tries to do a pinch of physical comedy. Yeah. And she's okay. It's not a funny script and it's not a romantic script. Tad chews away Jake. Get out of here, baby. You're poor. Yeah, you local yokel with your fingerless gloves and your trash can lid with fish bones. Be gone with you. So then Jake just leaves. And so then we go to lunch with Lindsay Lohan and her father. And Tad. And Tad, which is kind of a reveal because we don't see him right away. And she's talking about Tad here. And he's like, uh, you mean Ted? Daddy, his name's Tad. It's not Ted. Oh, and then a waiter walks over and goes, mm-hmm. Would mademoiselle like some artisanal, organically produced farm to table smokehouse bacon? On her wedge salad, I rest and butcher the swan myself. I don't do bacon. Mm, Very good, mademoiselle. No bacon on the wedge salad! And Beauregard Beaumont, who is maybe the only reasonable character in this movie. Yeah, you're right, he is. They paint him to be this arrogant, rich prick, but he's not. Well, and he also isn't having any of Tad's shit at any point in the movie he's just like oh this guy is terrible Lindsay Lohan says daddy he's an influencer he's got millions of people following him and then her dad says so basically you're a salesman which causes Tad to do a spit take and this is another example of this movie not knowing how to be funny yeah Tad's character is ridiculous on his face but besides being an influencer like there's not really any jokes about that no other than we're gonna take some Ussies, I guess, is a joke, and him using a hashtag at one point, I guess, is kind of a joke. But that's that's sort of it. I mean, to your point, like the script doesn't know where to get its comedy from, and so it just ends up being Tad being a buffoon as opposed to actually saying something about influencers or something like that. It just doesn't have that kind of ambition. This movie doesn't have anything to say about it. I just want to pause for a moment and just sort of assess what we have learned thus far in the first 10 minutes of our movie. First, this movie is called Falling for Christmas. There has been no mention of Christmas at all in this Mm -hmm. movie. Second, Lindsay Lohan is our movie star. And I'm still not sure if she's meant to be likable or unlikable. Because as mentioned in the introduction, this movie borrows heavily from the film Overboard. And I just want to point out that in Overboard, that movie has brilliant casting. Because Goldie Hawn is funny and charming and a delight in almost everything that she's in. So when you cast someone like that, the audience already knows. And she comes in and plays this over-the-top, rich, entitled woman. It makes it easier to accept her transition into to the Goldie Hawn we all know and love in that movie. In this movie, Lindsay Lohan appears to just be playing what I assume is Lindsay Lohan. Like with a bunch of hangers on, their sister's there, everybody's at her beck and call. So later when she transforms into basically the same character, but with her memory back and the ability to use a clothes washing machine, nothing has changed at all. (laughs) Right. I mean, she's not an awful person, I guess. No, she doesn't berate people. She doesn't treat the staff terribly. She's treating them the way that they are willing to treat her, which is not what happened in Overboard. Goldie Hawn's character in Overboard is just a cartoonish, entitled witch of a woman. And so when you see her put in the situations when she gets amnesia, it's funny and it's deserved. Well, here, nothing happens to her when she gets amnesia. She just kind of wanders around for a couple of days and drinks drinks hot cocoa also Lindsay lohan is a lovely woman however in this movie if you had if i had to pick her age i would have said at least 40 and she was 35 when she made it yeah yeah, yeah. this character in my opinion should be in their mid to late 20s she looks much older than i think this character needs to be yeah i agree and i i said the same thing when i was watching this movie i was like is she like 45 now yeah and then i looked up her age and i was like oh Whoa. no she just smoked a lot and, and drank a lot <laughs> yeah. for a number of years <laughs> and i'm like from everything i understand she's kind of put that behind her but that takes its toll yeah and no matter how much makeup you put on it looks like you've spent about a decade drinking and smoking also tad in this movie shouldn't be a successful influencer he should be an aspiring influencer who is looking to use Lindsay Lohan's name as a stepping stone to build his status as an influencer. Mm -hmm. And he should also have more of a wandering eye and even more entitled jerk than Lindsay Lohan. But that is not what they do. Also, Jake, our hunk, 
has done nothing to make him endearing. Mm -hmm. He took a dive on a ski race in hopes of squeezing a few bucks out of Lindsay Lohan's dad to get his ski lift and hot tub. If I was Lindsay Lohan's dad, I'd buy Jake's resort and burn it to the ground while he watched. Yeah, and all right, let's jump back to the movie because this is a good point to categorize also other stuff that Jake does that is completely pointless. Uh Uh-huh. So he goes back to his, in quotes, terrible lodge. The North Star Lodge. Right. Uh, which we have also pointed out looks amazing. It is a five-star luxury resort. It is the yes. Stein Erikens Lodge is where it was filmed, if you want to look it up, and it is fancy. And so as he's walking by, some dude that apparently works for him or with him or a stranger. No, there are two people that legally work here. Jake and the mother of his dead wife. And then illegally, <laughs> his daughter. And also any coconut headed people yeah. that he gets swiped from the hospital, which we'll yes. get into. But yeah, so this guy is just like, Hey Jake, your snowmobile's busted. I tried to fix it and I couldn't. And he's just like, Whoa, okay. And then <laughs> he says he'll fix it later and then doesn't. <laughs> That's nothing. Hey, he comes to the lodge and we meet Avi, who is his daughter, mm-hmm. and Alejandra who is his mother-in-law, and they announce that they are going down to the local town square to the Christmas wishing tree because that's what A.V.'s mother used to do with her. And now it's like this is grandmother's job. The exposition in this movie has the nuanced subtlety of an episode of Dora the Explorer. Again, classic pick six tell don't show movement from a movie but he's like well we sure don't have any guests and this business is falling apart anyway i gotta go take some of the guests that i was just complaining about not being here on a sleigh ride in my fancy sleigh oh by the way i didn't get any money from Lindsay lohan's dad to get our ski lift and our hot tubs this place is going to shit alejandro says she's like you didn't get the money He's like, no. He's like, we're going to need a miracle. And then A.V., the daughter, says, don't worry, Dad. Christmas is the time for miracles. Right, Grandma? This is my grandma or my abuela. Abuela means grandmother. Boots, can you pick out which one of these people is my abuela (laughs) or grandmother? (laughs) <laughs> so in a real can-do move jake goes to his office and just throws this proposal that he worked hard on and got yeah. bound at kinko's and everything it's full of crayon drawings of that ski lift and hot tub <laughs> it's like graphs that are unevenly drawn of the number of people that like hot tubs and it's just a hundred percent it looks like the schematic that kevin made to keep the wet bandits out of his house <laughs> <laughs> right right not not since uh wily e. coyote has someone <laughs> diagram this way but he opens up this drawer where we see this god-awful creepy doll staring up at him Uh uh-huh and he just fingers it like a goon for a second (laughs) and then we cut away from that because why creep out your audience any more than you have to we got over to Lindsay lohan's dad he's getting ready to leave on a business trip and Lindsay lohan walks in and she says look daddy about that job you offered me um uh, I just, uh, I wanted to say that, uh, I don't want to disappoint you. Hey, look, it's a snow globe. I haven't seen this in a while. And her dad goes, your mother gave me that in Gestalt. And I was like, that's where the rich asshole prep students went in scent of a woman. That's mm-hmm. where rich dicks go. <laughs> that's <laughs> like, right. Yeah, that's to- where Philip Seymour Hoffman drops a dime on somebody. <laughs> Importantly, the father says, I'll be back on Christmas Eve. I'm going to try not to do this a lot, but I know I'm going to. In Overboard, Goldie Hawn is so horrible. But when she finds redemption after get clocked in the head, it's believable and it's charming and you like the evolution of the characters. Lindsay Lohan is 35 going on 55. And she's like, what, looking for her life's calling to do something? The thing about Overboard is that at first Goldie Hawn doesn't enjoy being domestic and in this movie she goes from not liking it to being great at it in about three minutes in Overboard there's also an element of fish out of water so that helps to sort of create the comedic environment but I'm sure we'll touch on that later all right so so Lindsay Lohan she picks up this snow globe and she says you know what I remember daddy I remember mom's perfume remember she wore Chanel number five and a laugh remember how it would turn into this uncontrollable hacky cough and she'd flail around with that amber temp of a Virginia you slim just darting about try not to set the furniture on fire in the lobby <laughs> this hotel reminds me so much of my mom i miss her so much daddy so we have two characters in this movie with dead mom yeah 
And by association, we have two characters with dead wives. Mm -hmm. This is an emotionally complicated movie, Bo, meaning that I don't know how to feel emotionally about this movie. (laughs) It's been so long since I've had emotions, Chad. (laughs) It's hard for me to even judge. I think I was bored for a while. Then I was confused. And then I got hungry and then sleepy. Are those emotions? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they are. Hungry for sure is. Oh, daddy. You've given me everything I've ever wanted. And her father looks at her and says, Well, darling, I've got to go. I'll be back by Christmas Eve. I, mark it, that's the first mention of the word Christmas in our Christmas movie. And outside the random lights and decorations, and the fact that we saw a horse named Balthazar, which was the name of a wise man, you know, which is, you know, what, recognized by biblical scholars and homeschooled kids. <laughs> yeah, this is the first I'm hearing of it. <laughs> Lindsay Lohan looks at her dad. She says, you know what, daddy? You go off on your business trip. I'm in good hands. I'm going to be here with Ted. And like her dad just rolls his eyes like that asshole. Speaking of, Ted rolls in to pick Lindsay Lohan up. Driving a red Maserati with a trailer on the back pulling a snowmobile. He almost runs over the bellhop out front. Well, that's how you know he's, you know, a sociopath. Right. So Lindsay Lohan tells Terry, look, I don't want to be disturbed. Me and Tad are going to get up to the devil's business. So you open that door. It's on you what you see. Mm -hmm. And Terry, our guest services manager, he walks over and he says, yes, ma'am. But I wanted you to know I reserved you to a private gondola to take your pictures. And Tad says, no way, baby. Gondolas are for losers. Get out of my dreams and get into my car, Lindsay Lohan. That's a Billy Ocean reference. Yeah, baby. And then Terry says, while looking at Tad in his eyes, he's so colorful. And Tad hears this. And, Bo, I think this is the moment of Tad's sexual awakening. Because (laughs) the rest of this movie involves a B-plot that should be the A-plot. is about Tad, a gay man. Mm -hmm. Going through the ups and downs of the A-plot of this movie, where he comes out the backside realizing he's a homosexual. I don't think this is new. I think that Lindsay Lohan is the outlier in his dating history. Really? I think that it's like, hey, I'm bisexual, and Lindsay Lohan has the kind of money that makes me heterosexual purely. I gotcha. And then as soon as that money is off the table, he's like, yeah, baby, let's get back to those sweet, sweet behinds. <laughs> okay. I can see that. You know what? That's the great thing about art, Bo. The artist creates it. And once they put it into the world, it's up to us to figure out how we interpret it. Yeah. This is art. <laughs> <laughs> well. <sighs> Lindsay Lohan also here. I wish your girlfriend stuck around for this. She's dressed like a puffy pink flamingo. Head to toe. It's just this like bright, almost like pinkish purple. And she's got one of those Russian muff hats that matches it. And she hops into the Maserati and off they go to shoot selfies and ussies and thimmies and weeies and Right. And so they get in his Maserati, which probably not rated for snow driving but whatever or towing a snowmobile one would assume right and so she starts turning on the radio and jingle bell rock is playing oh i love this song what a bright time it's the right time to rock the night away dad is like oh behave baby it sounds like someone's stepping on a cat not only tells her that she's a terrible singer turns the radio so that instead they're listening to all out of love by air supply a song that will forever be owned by the opening of deadpool 2 then we cut back over to jake who has taken his guests on a sleigh ride and the whole point of this is just to show the cheapness of his sleigh which seems to be working fine until something falls off the guy in the back is complaining like hey is this safe he's like whoa this is handcrafted craftsmanship crafted look at this it's totally safe and he taps his hand on the side and a tiny little piece of what i thought was more ornamental metal that you would just tack back on and you're good to go Mm -hmm. i didn't take it that this meant the sleigh was a piece of shit and falling apart i just thought it was kind of like a failed attempt at a joke where the guy was concerned about the safety of the sleigh and something happened to just fall off like it wasn't like one of the the metal runners (laughs) right (laughs) broke and he replaced it with a piece of wood. I, I totally agree. Anyway, but yeah, so something falls off. He tells the guests like, it's perfectly safe. And then we're on to Tad and Lindsay Lohan, at, who have driven to this secluded spot. And Lindsay Lohan is like, look, I have to warn you, I'm not that 
strong of a skier. Yeah, I don't like to ski at all. It's kind of ironic being the daughter of a bajillionaire who owns a successful ski lodge. Actually, multiples. And I don't ski or work or contribute to society in any meaningful way. By the way, I got a letter from AARP the other day telling me I'm going to be eligible soon. What is that organization? <laughs> And so Ted is like, don't worry about it, baby. We're taking the snowmobile up to the mountain. Snowmobile, get off the back of that trailer already. Of course, it doesn't move because it's not a robot. But apparently they take off. Somehow or another, he gets it unloaded and they take off on the snowmobile. And this is the point where the movie makes it clear that they also don't have cell service. Uh So that they are completely isolated out here in the middle of nowhere. They go past a sign that's covered in ice. And as they go past it, the ice falls off and the sign reads, Danger, do not pass. But you're like, "Mm, let's be honest, even if it was uncovered, these two would have ignored it. (laughs) Right. That's for poor people, baby. We cut to the Christmas village in this town and we see this man who looks like Sam santa claus working at a food cart selling roasted chestnuts but he's not in full-blown mall santa get up it's the type of movie santa claus where you immediately realize oh this is the real santa claus just wandering around among us mortals fighting vampires or whatever the hell santa claus does (laughs) and that's uh, the movie i really want to see (laughs) take this bloodsucker ho 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 Alejandra and her grandmother, they go over this Christmas wishing tree, and Alejandra says to Avi, you only get one wish, so make it count. Like, well, no shit, Grandma. And then this Santa Claus, he's looking at them all creepy-like, and then the movie just cuts back to Suicide Snow Summit, and Lindsay Lohan and Tad are there taking photos on top of this mountain. This is the scene you referenced earlier that's clearly shot on a soundstage, and it looks like complete and total shit. I love it. And then Lindsay Lohan tells Tad, look, Take some pictures. I want to look sporty, but not sweaty. You know, hot, but not cheap. Smart, but approachable, okay? You know, I want to look tall, but not Groot tall. Well, Groot in volume one. I, You know, I could do Groot volume two. Do me a favor. Could you play a little Mr. Blue Sky, and I'll hop around on one foot. Tad takes this moment to be like, listen, baby, I've had a question that I need to ask you. Let me get down on one knee here and pull out this giant rock, an engagement ring. Uh-huh. And he hands it to her, and she's like, Oh my God, it's so big and gaudy. So we cut away before (laughs) nonsense can happen. Yeah, this is edited so badly. You don't cut away back to the Christmas village when you're building that momentum. Well, because you have to set up the Christmas magic in this movie, Chad, which happens here. Do that on the front. Then you cut back and you do the, the tumble down the hill. You don't cut those two things together. I mean, you're not wrong. But what happens is, Avi writes down her Christmas wish, Uh and then they put it on a tree, which is not something I ever did as a kid. I guess this is a wishing tree. And so Santa is watching all of this go down, and he gives his nose a little dink-a-dink-a-doo. Uh-huh. And the wind picks up and blows this note up into the air. Yeah. Alejandro and A.V. just kind of watch it float away. They're just like, yeah, that's what happens. You put your wish in a little ornament, and then once you hang it up, it explodes out of the ornament and goes up into the sky. And so this magic wind flows up into the mountains where Lindsay Lohan and Tad are at the mountaintop, and all of a sudden Lindsay Lohan just starts pinwheeling her arm like, oh my god, Tad, I'm about to fall i'm sliding down the mountain wait you think the wind from the wishing tree blew Lindsay lohan down the hill santa commits a felony of assault in this movie by using christmas magic to blow her down the mountain and head first into a tree i did not put that together at all and i watched this movie at least once <laughs> right alan you need to get on the stick man this should have been in the notes But that's what happens. And so she starts falling backwards against this terrible blue screen. Uh Uh-huh. And Ted is like, don't worry, baby. I got you. Yeah. And grabs her hand. And the ring slips off of her finger. So the the only thing Ted comes away with is this ring. Lindsay Lohan goes backwards down the mountain. Uh Uh-huh. He falls also. So he goes tumbling. Lindsay Lohan is flying. Mm -hmm. She goes head first into a tree. Full Sonny Bono. Which can mean one of three things. You either married Cher, Mm -hmm. you smacked into a tree with your head Mm -hmm. hard, Mm -hmm. or you were elected the mayor of Palm Springs. Oh, that's nice. (laughs) 
she should be dead. Yeah. Or or paralyzed. And we're now 20 minutes into this movie. We have an hour and eight minutes to wrap this up. Don't worry, folks. We're going to get there pretty quick. But we've spent almost no time with our hunky romantic lead, Jake. We've spent more time with Terry, the resort guest services manager, who's living rent-free in Tad's head right now. We've definitely spent more time <laughs> with Tad and his struggles to either truly recognize the person he sees in the mirror each day, or as you think, Bo, wondering when he's going to head back to Rio de Janeiro. Mm -hmm. Along comes Jake. Well, speaking of. Here I come back into the movie, everybody. I'm in a sleigh with two people. <laughs> The horse named Balthazar. They're going by the tree that Lindsay Lohan has skied into. Yeah, they see her pink outfit laying over in the snow. Right, and the guests in the sleigh are rightly asking, Oh my god, is that a dead body? <laughs> Of course that's what it is, man. You're just hoping that it wasn't physically or sexually assaulted, that this is truly just an accident. <laughs> and Jake is like, all right, you guys wait here. I need to get on the horn and call in a code three. Code three, code three. Oh, wait, let me get the walkie-talkie. Code three, code three. There was a coconut to the head. We've got a Gilligan on our hands, people. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta call in a code Gilligan. And <laughs> then we cut to the hospital where Jake and oh, local... Bah, 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 bah. Yeah, please. It's not a hospital. It's a health clinic. <laughs> it's an emergency clinic, yes. No, it's a health clinic. And a doctor <laughs> comes uh -huh. out with the sheriff and this doctor person's like all right um look there's no signs of a concussion she wasn't drugged or raped or drugged and raped mm -hmm. but there's a problem she doesn't remember anything prior to the accident and the sheriff says is it amnesia and this doctor titian goes hey that sounds pretty good something <laughs> like that well let's go with that sure i'm not a fan of labeling everything but hey you're the sheriff and jake's like well can we see her you know just yeah for goofs absolutely we don't have any sort of hipaa laws around here <laughs> <laughs> so they she takes the cop and jake to the room where Lindsay lohan is in the bed and Lindsay lohan is being appropriately kind of a jerk to the nurses and so forth well she just got crushed into the head i'm sure she's a little tatered right and she says to the nurse like i know who i am my name is my name is my name is waka waka slim dude that went through my head the way that the the cadence with which she <laughs> says that you're expecting my slim shady <laughs> no look my name is my name is inigo montoya wait hold on my name is earl but that was the tv show shit i don't know who i am so the sheriff is like you know we kind of ran it through vicap or whatever we can't find her fingerprints which means that she doesn't have a record or has ever had a job that required fingerprinting there's no id on her so jake she's technically yours by the laws of navy salvage so. well they don't know what to do with her and <laughs> jake volunteers sure he does <laughs> she could stay with me i own the north star lodge and we had some cancellations and Lindsay lohan says uh does it have room service what kind of breakfast do you serve and jake's like you know what screw you I'm just trying to be helpful young grateful hag and then the doctor's like yeah you know what you should probably go with jake here maybe if you did some normal daily routine things that could jar your memory <laughs> just walk could, it off could that like sheriff like it might get rid of the what did you call it sheriff amnesia it'll get rid of the sneesia it is the medical equivalent of rubbing some dirt on her amnesia jake is like <laughs> sure i could always use some free labor i mean help someone out in need now here's the thing in over when goldie hawn stiffs kurt russell for his carpentry work Kurt Russell is a bit of a jerk himself because he mm -hmm. recognizes her when she gets clocked on the head and he's like, I'm going to have her work this off. And he doesn't just bring her to the house to work. He tells this woman that they were married and he does some really bad Photoshop or has a friend do it and puts together scrapbooks with the two of them in it. It's a pretty elaborate scheme and it's, it's ridiculous and over the top, but it's funny. Mm -hmm. So they're both selfish in their own right. And through the course of that movie, when they come together, they both grow as people. In this case, Jake's just like, I gotta bet she could sleep in. At this point, he's not one to put her to work. Right. Just takes her home. And the and like I said, the doctor and the sheriff are both like, all right, well, I guess we know where she is if we need her. Jake's had a busy day, Bo. Think about what he did today. 
All right. Uh huh. He raced a bajillionaire down a ski slope and, you know, through the race. He was denied investment in his lodge. He mourned the death of his dead wife, fiddled around with that puppet doll in his drawer. He took two lovers on a sleigh ride where I'm pretty sure the guy got under the cover over the pants action. He found an almost dead woman and then he spent the better part of the afternoon at a health clinic stuffing his pockets with free condoms and questionably accurate COVID-19 home tests. That is a fine clinic if you ask me. Lindsay Lohan's at this lodge and she's wearing these overly themed pajamas and then Ava, the precocious daughter of our hunky male lead Jake, she peeks over the steps and she's got this snaggletooth grin and the actress who plays Ava she's the same in every scene in this movie she's always smiling way too big she's always way too happy she looks like she's in a commercial and just learned that wendy's has a peppermint frosty for a limited time this holiday season <laughs> which by the way they do i learned <laughs> look you know what i can hear you smiling Bo. Oh, look that's a peppermint frosty what do you want <laughs> nobody's that excited about anything this is a movie sweetheart you're not playing for the cheap seats in the back of the theater i don't need to see your tonsils every time you come on screen that's the problem with her performance is it's too stagey. She feels like a stage actress and she's fine for this shitty movie. But she, when she comes out, it's like, hey, everybody, who's looking at me? Lindsay Lohan, they put her in this room and it's fully decorated. It's got like a tree with lights and garland everywhere. This resort, as I mentioned earlier, has two employees. My guess is they just leave this stuff up year round because putting it up and taking it down would be like four months worth of work. And they're definitely not going to have that happen. Also, if Lindsay Lohan doesn't remember anything from before the accident, why doesn't that include things like speech or her ability to read or recognize that the sheriff was a sheriff because she calls them that before they introduce it she understands like the basic rules of society and yeah. the laws that we have well that's part of the gilligan syndrome is that you know how to exist in society you just don't know who you are so like fire isn't a mystery or gravity like she still understands numbers do you think she knows how to shit and clean herself properly I think she knows half of that. I think that's why they gave her all those used clothes from the lost and found bin. Because when she shits herself, they're not out any money. Right. I, I like when she asks Jake, oh my God, are these used clothes? And he's like, I mean, I think so. They were in a box. Lindsay Lohan is in her room. And she's wearing this one piece sleep nightgown. And she goes over to the window and she opens it and finds a raccoon peeking in. And Lindsay Lohan just screams like, oh! And she tumbles backward over an armchair. And this is, I think, meant to be played for laughs, but it's not funny. Jake immediately burst into the room. And he's like, what happened? Which means Jake was just standing outside her room, listening to her every move. Uh-huh. Listening to her breathe. Yeah. He inspects the window. He's like, whatever you saw, it's probably gone now. By the way, that's a nice granny gown you're wearing. And I'm like, dude, fuck you, Jake. Right. You're the one who gave me these clothes to wear. You're calling her a granny gown? If you need me, I'll just be installing another lock on your door that locks from the outside <laughs> and can't have you run it off. Lindsay Lohan says, oh, thanks. I guess that's a compliment. <laughs> Did you hear that sound? I keep hearing this noise and I find these little brown rocks on the floor that are squishy. Oh, there's another one. And the, the rocks follow me. All right. Well, tomorrow we teach you how to use a mop. <laughs> oh, there's another one. So we cut back to the woods. Uh-huh. And Tad comes across this cabin sitting on the ice that one would use for ice fishing. Tad kicks down the front door and he screams, Sanctuary, baby! And he goes inside and the man inside, we're going to find out his name's Ralph, he chunks a box full of fishing lures at Tad's face and some of them stick into his skin which looks pretty painful and ted's like i found a human being baby and a man hmm and you're like oh god like wh what's going on here and this old bearded bastard he's like my name's ralph have a cup of coffee and then these two stop and stare deeply into each other's eyes for an uncomfortably long time <laughs> yeah this was the moment where i was like is he gay ted is like Hey, baby, you got a cell phone charger or something? And Ralph's like, nope, don't have that. Don't believe in him. I'll tell you what, though. I can help you get that lure out of your face. And Tad's like, what lure, baby? I've got no lures in my face. Hang on. And he kind of looks up and there's one protruding from his brow. And he's like, all right, baby, I'm just going to pass out right here. <laughs> Yeah. And all, down he goes. When he passed out, man, all I could think about was Bruce Willis busting into Peter Green's pawn shop in Pulp Fiction. I was so <laughs> worried about Tad. Thought he was going to wake up in a gimp mask with Zed yeah, rolling his fingers. In one of the 
the more shameless moments of the movie, Lindsay Lohan wakes up the next morning to the Netflix sound and her TV showing the Netflix original Christmas movie, A Castle for Christmas. Mm-hmm. Starring Brooke Shields and Carrie Elwes. Yeah. Uh-huh. And rightfully hurls the remote at the TV until it goes away. I'll give the movie credit here. Because when she wakes up this morning, which is day two of our movie, everything we've talked about happened in the first day. On day two, they do replicate the same opening at the beginning of the film, but here she's asleep in a bed. The linens aren't nearly as nice. She is still using a sleep mask, but here it's a Christmas sock. Mm -hmm. (laughs) and instead of grabbing the remote for the window blinds that's when she turns on the tv and we get a gratuitous netflix uh, promotion why are you promoting netflix in a netflix movie it's one of those like knowing winky kind of jokes that really falls flat in this movie it feels like if you were at the grand canyon and everybody there is like hey you should visit the grand canyon (laughs) she opens the window like she did at the beginning of the movie like throws open the, the curtains and there are a bunch of pasty caucasian people with skis passing by they're like hey isn't that Lindsay Lohan star of the Parrot Trap and Freaky Friday? And so A.V. slips in and is like, oh my God, Lindsay Lohan, your room is a mess. Are you here to clean it up? Ariba Andale. Also, there's these soft brown eggs all over the place. I don't know where they're coming from. I think this place is haunted. <laughs> it's haunted by brown goo. A.V. says, no, silly. I'm not the housekeeper. That's my grandmother or possibly my dad. The only two people who legally work here. I definitely don't work here. Are you with Children's Services? Help me. <laughs> All right, little girl. That sounds fair. Look, I need a hair dryer for this big tangle of a mess sitting on my head. Well, how about you come to my room? That's where I'm trying to escape. There are bars on the window. She goes into her room. As Lindsay Lohan is kind of getting herself cleaned up, A.V. is like, hey, what should we call you? I can't call you Prisoner 432789 because that was the last girl that you lived here. What if we name you after one of my stuffed animals? There's Frankie One-Eye, Barry the Berry Bear. He's the bear that eats berries and his name is Barry. I have Andre the Giant Panda. And then there's also Sarah the Lamb. She really sucks. And Lindsay Lohan says, hey, you can call me Sarah. I like that name. Which... Again, in this movie's defense, I will give it credit where it's due. Her character in this movie is named Sierra. So Mm -hmm. when she calls her Sarah, I was like, oh, that's clever that it was close enough. But if I had worked on this script, which I ain't never written a script in my life, I would have put a necklace around Lindsay Lohan's neck that belonged to Lindsay Lohan's mother and have them find that and call her by her mother's name and maybe make the mom and Lindsay Lohan have similar sounding names to where it's familiar and you still tie in the dead mom storyline. Yeah, that's a little creepy. Anyway, so then A.V. in grand fashion for this movie is like, hey, now that you're in my room, let me give you some of my exposition. My mom died two years ago. Sometimes I talk to my mom's picture. Is that weird? And Lindsay Lohan is like, it's not weird at all, but don't tell another living soul that you do that. Otherwise, they are going to take you to a hospital and not the kind that they let me walk out of like some kind of crazy person. They're going to take you into the kind of hospital that you don't get out of without a judge's orders. My mom, when she died a couple years ago, me and my dad, we were decorating the Christmas tree, waiting for my mom to come back from work. And then a couple hours went by. But my mom wasn't home, so my dad called her office, but there was no answer. And then Christmas Day came and went, but still nothing. So the police began a search. Four or five days went by, and neither of us could eat or sleep, and everything was falling apart, and it was snowing outside, and the house was freezing. So I went to try to light a fire, and that's when I noticed the smell. And the firemen came, and they broke through the chimney, and me and my dad were there, and we were expecting to pull out a dead cat or a bird, and instead they pulled out my mom. She was dressed like Mrs. Santa Claus. She'd been climbing down the chimney with her arms full of presents she was gonna surprise us she must have slipped and broke her neck she died instantly so this year i made a christmas wish that she would rise from the dead and i would get my mom back do you happen to have a dead mom too oh i'm sorry honey were you telling me a story and also were you talking about cooking something because i am famished so they go downstairs and instinctively they head towards the bar because much <laughs> like a bird knowing how to fly south for the winter Lindsay lohan can go find is this an open bar hold on a second 
I smell Grey Goose. It's not the kind you're thinking of, sweetheart. Charge it to my room. Put it under the name Larry the Lamb or whatever the hell. This little girl paid for it. AV introduces Lindsay Lohan to her grandmother, and Jake is there, again, because they're the only ones that work in this place. And Jake says, oh, we ran out of pancakes, but I can make you some eggs. And Lindsay Lohan says, uh, look, I'll make my own breakfast. Hand me that bottle of vodka. Ha, it's a little joke I do. And then we see Lindsay Lohan ineptly making breakfast, uh -huh. and AV offers her some bacon, and Lindsay Lohan says, oh, I don't do bacon. And Avi's like, what do you mean? Just eat it. And just jams a handful into Lindsay Lohan's mouth like it's a fistful of green eggs and ham. She's like, oh, I do like salty bacon. I do like it, Lindsay Lohan I am. I can eat it on a ship in the sea with my head concussed against a tree. And Jake, while all this is going down, like leans over to Alejandra and is like, whoa, I don't know why, but I feel like I've met this woman before. Like, maybe I've spilled something on her. We get a, our third instance of seeing the infinity rooftop pool here. Hello. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get mileage out of that shot. That's for sure. It's got its SAG card. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's officially collecting health insurance now for, <laughs> for itself and all of its little tiny baby pools. Yeah. Al uh, Angel Lansbury's getting it a roll on Murder <laughs> She Wrote. So it can keep its insurance in its old age. Terry, our guest services manager, and Lindsay Lohan's real life sister, they go in to do a safety check at our hotel room, but there's no answer. And Terry's face is trying to suppress any emotion that reflects the joy that he's feeling, knowing that she might be out of the picture and tag back on the market mm -hmm. they all go inside and they find a dozen roses with the card and the head of security is with him and he reads it and it says Lindsay lohan baby i can't wait to take you away love tad and then terry's face like he's ready to punch a hole in the wall Mm -hmm. Then the movie cuts to Tad waking up in Ralph's ice fishing sex shack. Tad is now wearing a pair of long red underwear, clothing that does not belong to Tad and was not clothing that he was wearing the night before or clothing that he put on himself. I mean, we're just lucky that it's clothing at all. How crazy would it be if you woke up <laughs> in an ice fishing <laughs> sex shack in clothes that you did not have on the night before? Or just anywhere. Like if you woke up in your bed. <laughs> wearing long red thermal underwear yeah like, what happened it did not own any underwear like that and had no memory of changing into <laughs> it and you just woke up like that you'd be like somebody chloroform me in the night and if i'm lucky the only thing they did was change my underwear tag gets up and he starts to get dressed himself and on the wall there's a newspaper front page from the denver observer dated july 21st 1969 and the headline reads man walks on moon and tad reads this and goes no why baby is that a joke yes 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 because i gotta tell denise about this because that's hilarious <laughs> yeah i mean it would be funnier if he mentioned it later in the movie to someone like he had picked up this bit of knowledge and wanted to make himself seem smarter by using it or if he got amnesia <laughs> <laughs> oh and here, here's what we ought to do chad this is a million dollar idea again trademark pick six movie so nobody try to do this we do a movie where everybody in the movie has amnesia <laughs> <laughs> that they all get clunked on the head and it's just it's a murder mystery right so somebody is dead everyone else has amnesia and they've got to figure out who they are before the killer strikes again which is one of them but the killer doesn't know they're a killer right that's the genius of it is that somebody is the killer and doesn't know that they're the killer i'll let you handle that one <laughs> Tad wanders off into the snow and he finds Ralph trying to start his pickup truck. And Ralph says, well, truck ain't working. Let's head out on foot. Two days walk to the road. So they're just going to wander off into the snow. Cut back to the North Star Lodge where Alejandra is on the phone saying, what? Another cancellation? You're going to an Airbnb? Ay, Dios mío. And then Jake says, how do we compete with Airbnb? I'm like, I don't know, Jake. Maybe you lower your prices. Maybe you just guarantee that you won't put hidden cameras in the bathrooms and bedrooms to record people when they're in their most vulnerable states. You're saying not run? a vacancy scam like that movie i don't know that doesn't sound like owning a hotel to me we can't even afford a housekeeper and then here comes Lindsay lohan walking in she's like hey is anybody looking for me yet no shit that doctor titian at the health clinic said if i did a bunch of normal stuff maybe that jaw my memory back hey give me another bottle of vodka that feels natural oh you know what how about a montage of you two taking advantage of my incapacitated mental state that might help to jog my memory yeah and like alejandra and jake are like we've got the idea that she just said out loud 
<laughs> and then we get a montage of Lindsay Lohan doing a bunch of housework or hotel work. Yeah. The kind having, of stuff a four-year-old could do, Bo. Yeah. Having trouble with a fitted sheet, a toilet being plunged explodes on her, washing clothes with an entire bottle of detergent. I mean, it's exactly what you would expect from something like this. The best bit is the fitted sheet just because Lindsay Lohan is not the worst physical comedian, but it's all nigh unwatchable. I think Winona Ryder would be a terrible physical comedian she's not very funny i heard her in an interview once that she knows she's not funny and when she accidentally says something funny she instinctively repeats it thinking it will be funny again and then it just ruins the entire moment that feels <laughs> right like winona Ryder is a perfectly fine actress in a number of things and she is actually very funny in the movie the 10 as a woman who has a torrid affair with a ventriloquist dummy but it's because she plays it straight well that's kind of like leslie neal Leslie right. Nielsen never really said or did anything that he kind of said unfunny things in unfunny ways and it somehow came out funny. Yeah, but he got to the point where he was kind of mugging for the camera a little bit and that's when it stopped being funny. Yeah. I heard he was a real dick. I could see that. That's yeah. that's old school Hollywood, you know. Yeah. He used to carry around a fart machine, like a little handheld squeeze box to make fart noises uh -huh. because he wasn't a funny person, but people expected him to be funny. So he could just reach into his pocket and make a fart noise. And then that's how he got away with being funny. I have seen this and I do think that's funny. The fart box? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's all about the timing. Yeah. If he at least has funny timing, he doesn't have to be funny himself. But if he knows the right time to deploy the fart machine, then that's still funny. I think your hotel's haunted. Don't step in that egg and definitely don't put it in your mouth. I made a mistake twice already. Oh, wow. The ghosts have been eating corn. <laughs> so Ralph and Tad are going to head off into the snow and they're march, march, marching through the woods. Tad collapses because he's the drama queen. And Ralph comes over. He's like, hey, come here. Give me your feet. And he slaps a couple of small snowshoes on Tad's feet so he has better traction. And Tad's like, but what about you, baby? How are you going to get through the snow? And Ralph, the mountain man, looks at Tad and goes, don't worry about me. I got big feet. And Tad's eyes grow to the size of saucers. You think he was talking about his dick? Is that what you're saying? I, I that Ralph is... think he's talking about his dick. I bet that is one of the stinkiest penises you're likely to run across anywhere. Ralph, the mountain man? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> his ice fish sex shack right because you know he's cranking it in that sex shack all the time it's all caked up right it's just the musk of weeks worth of dried <laughs> awful that's why tad is a uh, like drawn to him it's like can't put my finger on it baby but there's a smell about you it smells a little like bleach but sexy <laughs> what's this sexy bleach like chlor sex back at the north star lodge nothing is happening Bo. Lindsay lohan's just kind of wandering around she heads up to avi's room and avi's having some difficulty with her hair so Lindsay lohan steps in, hey i can help you out here you know when i was a little girl i think this happened my mom used to say some things just take time and they'll work themselves out if you wait long enough that just sounds like don't do anything it'll go away exactly and there's kind of a dream sequence here where like uh -huh. little Lindsay lohan is <laughs> is watching her mom like brush her hair or something and avi is like hey do you remember your mom Lindsay lohan and Lindsay lohan is like i think i do but yeah. maybe that was just a nanny or something was i rich what am i doing in this dump i remember that thing about my mother she smelled like lilac and avi says hmm when they found my mom she smelled like the angel of death oh christ and then we get to Jake. He's trying to clean up all the suds from the washing machine disaster earlier. And Jake screams out, A.V., what happened in here? Because Avi's the one who normally does all the laundry at the resort and the dishes. And she cleans the horse stables and the accounting and all their online marketing. She's nine years old, though. She's got to earn her keep. Right. And Lindsay Lohan comes in. She was like, uh, I think this was my fault. You know what? It was my fault. Boo hoo hoo. And she runs off crying. So she goes out to the biblical horse that we talked about earlier. Uh -huh, Balthazar. And she's just telling this horse, like, I got to tell you, Balthazar, I've never felt more useless than I do right now. I can't seem to do anything right. Maybe the reason I can't remember anything is because there's nothing worth remembering. Oh, well, maybe I'm going to go pick up some random wood and bring it in for fire. I'm going to set fire to this whole lodge. <laughs> I'm going to be remembered, Balthazar. Remembered for something. <laughs> Whoa, I think his stall might be haunted by one of them ghosts. Whoa, 
Look at those nuggets on the ground. This place is definitely haunted. Don't eat one of them eggs. I made that mistake three times now. I think it's on fire because there's steam coming off of it. <laughs> she wanders off to go pick up wood and the camera pans <laughs> over. And who's hiding over in the corner listening to her? Jake. Uh, here's the thing I thought was going to happen is that she's going to struggle with the wood and then he's going to come help her. But instead what happens is Lindsay Lohan is carrying like this armful of wood and slips on some steps and eats it hard on this icy cement. was it worse than when you fell i mean it's in the ballpark like those are both she landed on steps you land on steps or you land on terra firma terra firma steps are worse yeah you're right did you notice the way she was carrying the wood both of her arms were straight out cradled and this wood is stacked from her fingertips to her belly and up to her chin there is no way unless she has like some sort of prehensile tail <laughs> That, that was that was hidden in her pants that she can pick up this wood and stack it in such a fashion it's impossible Bo. i, I think and, balthazar helped her like here you go Lindsay lohan <laughs> like he picked it up with his teeth you really warm my heart with your tales of failure <laughs> but jay comes over to see if she's <laughs> broken anything or hit her head again and like <laughs> got her memory back <laughs> or got like double amnesia where now she doesn't remember nothing she doesn't any remember anything Thing that led up to that accident you just it's a do-over <laughs> right like I, I remember waking up in the hospital and then nothing <laughs> you don't remember your time like fighting with a sheet or no <laughs> you just keep clocking her on the head it's like this caveman style men in black like whatever they need her to forget everything that happened they just g- grab a brick clock <laughs> um <laughs> and jake it turns out though she doesn't have double amnesia which is a real shame <laughs> she's just partially paralyzed in one leg from the fall they need to do falling for christmas too <laughs> where she gets amnesia but so does jake <laughs> and they've got to find their way back to each other so jake rushes over and is like hey can you remember who i am and she's like yeah i think so and he's like well look i'm so sorry for blowing up a- about the detergent but you really screwed up and caused me a lot of trouble and she's like listen i just feel like unclaimed luggage nobody's even <laughs> looking for me hey i've got an idea how about we blow off all this responsibility of running a business and we just go to this big market downtown maybe somebody will recognize you there and she's like that sounds great and then blows her nose in the handkerchief that he's offered her and hands it back to him he's like uh no you can keep it which i think is a joke (laughs) you really need to call like an exorcist or something or a ghostbuster like i don't know what's happening here but, but your place has got some bad mojo going on here well you've got the worst amnesia i've ever seen there's two eggs behind me. <laughs> Don't touch them. <laughs> See, that's the Leslie Nielsen thing. It's just the timing. So anyway, they go to this <laughs> stupid market thing. <laughs> this would be so terrible. And and they and, and he's like, <laughs> Hey Lindsay Lohan, do you recognize anything? And she's like, No, nothing here rings a bell. <laughs> Have, let me ask you a question. Is there any reason that I would have ever been here before? Uh, probably not. Why the hell would I recognize any of this? Right, but he doesn't know if she's a local, even though the local cop <laughs> would have recognized. Like, it's not that big a town. It's like maybe 150 people here. Yeah. So Santa, by the way, is like perving all of this. He's hanging out selling his hot nuts in your mouth, roasted chestnuts. At his little- roasted chestnuts. Good Lord. And <laughs> so... <laughs> I mean, if somebody offered you roasted chestnuts, you would just smack it out of their hand onto the ground and give me something edible. This is a fact. If you eat enough chestnuts, Chad, that's arsenic. You'll die. That's why you roast them. To is burn them up. Yeah. It, 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 chestnuts roasting on, on an open fire. So the whole premise of that is we're getting rid of this deadly poison. See, you know things. I mean, I don't know what, who Balthazar is, but <laughs> he was probably peddling like uncooked chestnuts, trying to murder everyone. But so Santa is watching this from this booth, which by the way, he says he's watching for a friend. Yeah, right. Right. Which means you're just wandering around like a spectral <laughs> elfin lunatic. And Avi is like, oh my God, look at this fancy sleigh. 
dad, don't you need one of those? Because some random bit of metal fell off the one that you've got, and otherwise it's perfectly fine. And Jake's like, oh, that's a little rich for my blood, baby. And so Jake and Lindsay Lohan end up having this talk about his dead wife, where he's like, yeah, the North Star Lodge is really her family's business. I just kind of fell into it, but I really love the place, you know? And I don't understand why people prefer, like, big, flashy resorts with good food and comfortable beds and infinity pools and when you could stay at my lodge which has four rooms and overflowing washing machines and crazy people standing outside your door waiting for you to see raccoons at night i don't know the way you the way you say it it makes it sound like paradise jakey amy's in this arts and crafts vendor tent she's like can i have this can i have this and they're like, like he's like no we don't have any money we were not buying anything. And then Santa wanders over like, oh, uh, ho, ho, I'm, I'm watching this tent for a friend too. Lindsay Lohan, maybe you should look at this snow globe. And he hands her a snow globe and she stares deeply into it. And she kind of goes into a trance and Jake says, did you remember something? And she's like, I think so, maybe. And first off, the snow globe he gives her isn't the same snow globe from earlier. It's a different right. snow globe. But just having a snow globe in her hand made her kind of sort of to remember something. And Jake's like, well, you remembered something. That's pretty good. I'll take it. And then Lindsay Lohan goes, <laughs> look, you got a Beetlejuice or a Casper or one of those it follows things around here. <laughs> it smells like holy hell. All right. <laughs> you have an it follows around here. <laughs> so Jake gets up by this snow globe for her, though. And it's like, here, you can have it. Maybe it'll help you remember other stuff, like how not to poop your pants at a, every 37 seconds. This is the end of day two of our movie. Yeah. It's like, not since Midnight Run has more happened in a movie in 48 hours. Well, except for the movie 48 hours. And another yeah. 48 hours. A lot happened in those movies. Maybe Stakeout. Yeah, Stakeout did have a lot of things that happened there as well. A lot happened in the Goonies. I, I strike that comment from the... <laughs> Excuse me, reporter, read that back to me. You've got a Beetlejuice? <laughs> or it follows around here. All right, we'll pick up from there. Uh, so they scurry off to watch this Christmas tree being lit. This Rockefeller Center Christmas tree. Yeah, with a full fireworks show behind it. Dude. <laughs> this is real off the books. <laughs> this is not. The fact that they don't burn down the town is shocking. It's like an unincorporated municipality. They issue their own bonds and deeds. You know, it's like a, the papal state in the middle of Utah. They clearly have their own currency, as we'll see at the end of the movie, where people are just writing like IOUs to Jake and he's going to cash them in or else the mayor and his goon squad come to collect. <laughs> yeah, it all runs on Beauregard bucks. Right, yeah, Beaumont Bucks. And <laughs> so the mayor's addressing the crowd. You know, maybe the best part of doing this job is I get to light the Christmas tree. Only I don't light the Christmas tree. I'm going to pick this random girl out of the crowd, and she's going to turn this overly elaborate candy cane lever that we've got here. Yeah, why didn't he select Avi to do it? Because that would have made some kind of sense in the movie, and instead, <laughs> like... You know, let's get this girl her Hollywood insurance. Music plays as and fireworks are going off, all this stuff. Jake starts singing Christmas carols along with everybody else in the crowd. And he's like, hey, why aren't you singing along, Lindsay Lohan? And she's like, oh, because I don't know. I think somebody told me I had the voice like I was goggling gravel and broken glass. He's like, oh, everybody needs to sing at Christmas. And so she sings along with him and, you know, off the heaven <laughs> angels sing. Oh, God, it's horrible. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Do you have any air supply? And so later on, after they're beginning to fall in love, Jake is tucking A.V. into bed while Lindsay Lohan is just hanging on to this globe that she got. And she says, I think my mom gave me something like this. When I looked into that snow globe, I saw this beautiful woman and I think it was my mother. But then that memory disappeared. There was a moment where they kind of linger and you think like, well, maybe they're going to kiss or something. And then they just kind of awkwardly say goodnight. And before they can completely go their separate ways, Lindsay Lohan is like, you know, I just got to tell you, Jake, I've never met anyone like you before. Do you mean because I'm basically holding you hostage in this lodge? No, because I've got 48 hours worth of memories. I ain't met that many people <laughs> in the last couple of days, Jakey. Right, right. If I had met somebody like you, 
I would have remembered it. <laughs> oh my god, we'll get to the last line of this stinker. It's just the worst. <laughs> this is when these two are falling in love. It's been two days. What has Jake done to earn her affection? Well, we call it n- n- we call it negging, Chad. He found her in the snow. Yeah. He brought her back to his lodge. Uh-huh. He gave her lice-riddled clothing from a lost and found box. Uh-huh. He put her to work cleaning bathrooms rooms and doing laundry jake has also ignored his daughter this entire film if you said it was his niece or if she was just alejandra's granddaughter and they weren't related it's totally believable he went bought her a snow globe from a guy who pocketed the cash he also yelled at her yeah and then watched her fall and did nothing to help her up lurked outside of her door (laughs) Right, putting a new lock on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's classic negging behavior. He's done nothing except what, be handsome? Ish, you know. I mean, he's got the beard and the little swoop of hair. Why is this movie rated PG? Is it because of all the implied sex between Tad and Ralph? (laughs) And Terry, yeah. Yeah. That's going to be the threesome that you want. Oh, God, the smells. Oh, the smells. (laughs) And when Terry shows up with a glam squad to that party. (laughs) Oh, they're going to have their hands full with Ralph. Oh my goodness. I mean, <laughs> you just got to break it all down and start all over. Shave him up. <laughs> it's the next morning. We're day three. And Lindsay Lohan, she wakes up and both on her own, she just makes her own bed. And everyone is shocked that she is behaving the basic actions of a functioning adult that you could teach to a chimpanzee. Oh my God. It's so good that you dressed yourself and got in your own bed. We see a montage. Avi then teaches Lindsay Lohan, an adult, how to use the washing machine, which arguably she was taught the day before. And just did it wrong the whole problem was that the detergent like the bottle fell in and she just didn't notice it so it wasn't as bad as you know she just didn't understand the basics of laundry you don't think she heard the huge kathunk into the drum when an entire full bottle of gain that she probably thought it was more the brown ghost <laughs> that's a good point <laughs> Oh my god, this place is haunted too. <laughs> that was a big one. Get a Ouija board. <laughs> so, I like the we fact We got one! <laughs> <laughs> I like the fact, too, that Aliadra, when she walks in and Lindsay Lohan has done the bare minimum of making her bed, gives her that kind of nodding smile like, you You get it. You did it. Look at you. You pulled the covers up and arranged the pillows in a somewhat linear fashion. In more of this montage of like everybody falling in love, Jake is helping her learn how to flip pancakes. Uh I mean, she's terrible at it, but he, he tries. They're doing laundry together building gingerbread houses and getting into candy fights and singing jake's playing an acoustic guitar and they're all singing up on the rooftop like i wanted to throw up it felt like a pixie stick had become a movie (laughs) and you know that he hasn't played this guitar since he was carting it around to college parties playing dave matthews band that's how he got (laughs) carla in the first place and so he decides like well i'm gonna teach her how to ski so he takes her up on the slopes and like the kid is there along with the grandma and stuff and they're skiing just fine because they're not you know completely inept and (laughs) you know where Lindsay lohan is just like i forgot how knees work do they bend in both directions if so my legs are broken i heard that dogs drown because they look up at the rain is that true or is that geese they go skiing together and of course they end up tumbling down the hill and landing in each other's arms how romantic Bo. still they do not kiss that is the thing that these movies kind of tease is like we can't have the two people who are falling in love kiss until the thing happens where's tad He's been gone for like two days now. We haven't seen him since day one. Do we really need that back in the movie? I mean, uh, there is a long stretch here where it's just Lindsay Lohan and Jake falling in love. Right. And the next movement of this movie is her coming into the lobby of the North Star Lodge. Uh And the sleigh guests are leaving. Yeah. And she goes, thanks for staying at the North Star Lodge. Like, she is an actual employee. Like, she... (laughs) has some stake in any of this <laughs> at this point i was like oh well jake's gaslighting is clearly working because now she thinks that she's just part of the crew and just like avi does avi by the way not related just a girl that they found and <laughs> they've just been telling her yeah that's your dad really <laughs> right yeah i mean do you know who's your dad if, if not him well i don't know well right do you have any pictures of us they burned in the great fire there was a fire mm-hmm. it was great <laughs> <laughs> Lizzie Lohan goes into the office to, I don't know, do some paperwork or something. <laughs> Fill out her W-4. <laughs> 
right. <laughs> right. Look, I, I got to make sure that my withholding is appropriate. I don't want to pay taxes at the end of the year. She's requesting a day off so she can go back to the Christmas market. <laughs> I really like the snow globes they have there. I wonder if I could get a couple more. So she goes to this office and finds Aliandra crying. Yeah. And she's like, oh boy, should I just leave? I don't want to get sucked into something here. And the grandmother is like, no, 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 have a seat. She's like, oh boy. <laughs> here he goes. So I guess I should ask, what are you doing? And, and she's like, oh, I have here this memory book. And this is pictures of all these people who stayed at the lodge and had weddings and wrote us notes. And it's how the lodge has changed all these lives. And by the way, did I say the lodge is in trouble? Because the lodge is in trouble. And Jay may have to shut it down. What? And also look at all the people that, whose lives we've helped. And Lindsay <laughs> Lohan is like, oh boy, um, maybe it'll get better. You know, my mother used to say, if you just ignore stuff, eventually it all works out. So that's probably what's going to happen here. Allie, I was like, uh, Miss Lindsay Lohan, this is terrible news. Jake is, he's a horrible businessman. We make no money. Do me a favor. Take this book and put it back in Jake's desk when you're done looking through it. So Alejandra, she leaves and Lindsay Lohan flips through the book. And then she goes to put the book back in Jake's desk drawer. And she opens up the top drawer and she finds a loaded gun and sealed suicide note. No, I'm just kidding. She finds that angel tree topper doll that Jake was blubbering over earlier. Yeah. And Jake walks in and he freaks out. Like, you know, she discovered a voodoo doll or something. And Jake says, well, I'm not ready to put that up on top of a Christmas tree yet. Because two years ago, my wife climbed down the chimney to surprise Davy and me and she got stuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I heard this story from the kid. But I built a fire and the coroner said she suffocated to death. I could hear her screaming up in the chimney, but I thought she was trying to be funny because my dead ex-wife had a dark sense of humor. <laughs> and Lindsay Hans like, oh, my God. Avi said she died from having a neck broke. It's like, no, it was asphyxiation from smoke inhalation from the fire I built. I accidentally killed my wife. Anyway, I'm all busted up over that angel tree topper. Yeah, you didn't look in my other drawers. No, why? Because there's gun suicide. <laughs> <laughs> also, gotta go toy drive. Oh, wait, I'll go with you. I can help at a toy drive. Do I get paid for this? Well, you get paid as much as you get paid for everything else. That much. Ooh, I'm going to be rolling into chestnuts. Oh, more Beaumont Bucks for me. Why does that name sound so familiar? <laughs> at, at this toy drive, we see Lindsay Lohan just wrapping a present. Again, much like the laundry where it's like, you're still a human being. And you understand that this is not how this is supposed to look, right? I mean, it looks like a monkey did it. Yeah, yeah right. If you left a football, a roll of wrapping paper, and a few things of scotch tape overnight, the next morning, this is what it would look like. <laughs> right if you get a thousand monkeys with a thousand rolls of wrapping paper <laughs> the thousand presents here's what you're gonna get <laughs> right one of them's gonna produce this and it will be the best it, it got <laughs> Jake comes over and is like, no, dummy, you do it like this, and shows her how to very quickly and neatly wrap a gift. That looks a lot better than mine. And then he gets called away to do something, and then- Jake, we need you to come over here and be handsome. Oh, okay. Don't you talk about me while I'm gone with my friend here, Louise. He takes off, and Louise is like, is he gone? Boy, that Jake is a real something. I can't even tell you how many charities he helps with around town. He's practically a saint, and I heard he can really work that tool is. He gives all of his money away, and his feet are so big. And did I mention he gives all of his money away to charities? He's always volunteering and not working at the lodge? I wish there was a way this small, idyllic town could show him how much they care about him. I have to tell you he spends so much time thinking of other people and working with other civic groups just like that clown friend of mine John Gacy I think is his name yeah he does a lot of good work too you got a poltergeist or something around here Need to, you need to call a ghost hunter. So Lindsay Lohan and Jake get back to the lodge and find themselves standing under the mistletoe. And there's a moment where they're almost going to kiss. And get in here and give me some sugar, baby. And he's like, oh, I don't know. I Like, you're hot and all for a middle-aged woman, but... <laughs> you might be married or have herpes or something we've only known each other for three days yeah so they stop themselves uh-huh and go their separate ways but when Lindsay lohan goes to bed she's got a real smile on her face like oh yeah i'm gonna nail that down <laughs> 
Well, that's the move for young men listening. I'll give you a piece of advice. Like, pretend like you're not that interested. Yeah, it's yeah. it's like having a pet. You ever notice how cats always go to the people that hate cats? That's how it right. works. I'm not saying be a jerk. Just when you get to that point of like, hey, it's go time. You know what? I think we should wait a little longer. When she lays in that bed, she's totally like, oh, I'm fucking Jake tomorrow night. I'm going to go into that lost and found bit. And I'm going to find the sexiest moth-eaten sweater that I can find. And a pair of pants that isn't stained by ghost eggs. And I'm going to show him va-va-voom. <laughs> These ghost eggs look like little meatballs. <laughs> Hold on. Sh- should I? Nah. Oh, fourth time. <laughs> <laughs> oh stupid amnesia i'm always forgetting these ghost eggs taste like poop wait a second so it's the morning of day four right uh-huh and Lindsay lohan tracks down av and aliandra and is like guess what i it came to me last night in a dream and they're like your identity and she's like no no no, no. the way to save the lodge beg <laughs> I mean, here's how we save the community center. They go to tell Jake, and he's like, "No, no, listen. Here's what we're gonna do, Jakey. We're gonna ha- we're gonna throw a party, all right, on Christmas Eve at seven o'clock. You know, when nobody got nothing else better to do. They'll all come here, and when they're at the lodge, then we say, "Hey, we're about to go bankrupt. Give us all your money. I know it <laughs> sounds like we're gonna be robbing them, but it's gonna be festive and shit. All right? <laughs> right. We're not really gonna shoot anybody. By the way, if you're looking for your gun." I took it, all right? It's, I just called it some insurance. Also, why did the bottom drawer have a human skull in there? You know what? Some you, some people need to keep secrets. Let's throw this party, Jakey. Jake, of course, just refuses. He He's like, you know, maybe it's a good idea that we just close this place down. What, you want to lose all the memories from the North Star Lodge? Just give it away. You want to lose those memories, Jakey? That's big talk from coming from somebody that doesn't have any memories. What would you know about it anyway? How dare you, Jakey? Oh, jeez. Don't run away. I'm sorry, Lindsay Lohan. <laughs> That's what happens. Totally, yes. He immediately is like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, you know what? I was going to just throw it out. I was going to open up the buffet, but seeing you now, forget it. Buffet's closed. Look, I'm really sorry. It's just with you. Like, I felt some stuff that I didn't think I'd feel again on account of my dead wife. And I guess, Lindsay Lohan, my biggest fear is making new memories. What the hell does that mean? I don't know. (laughs) And so, meanwhile, Jake goes to the (laughs) office to pout about all of this. That's what happens. He pouts. Yeah. His eyes are just like full of tears. They're just like swimming in front of his eyeballs, daring themselves to leap off onto his cheeks. And Leandra finds him in this office and he's like, I gotta be honest. I have no idea what I'm doing right now. But that is obvious, Jake. You're terrible at this job. Listen, you have helped this whole family together, but now we're okay. We don't need you anymore. You're an anchor on us, holding us all back. It's okay (laughs) to let your dead wife go. She was my daughter, and I don't even think about her anymore. (laughs) And when I do think about her, it's the terrible things she did. The lying, the drug use, the embezzlement, all the credit cards she opened in my name. Dude, you were describing my mother. You had me at embezzlement. <laughs> but, so Lindsay Lohan then goes to uh, Aliatra and she's like, I think it's time for me to go. What do you mean, Miss Lindsay Lohan? Where are you going to go? You have amnesia. You have no money. You have pockets full of chestnuts. They're worthless once you leave the incorporated city of Snowsville, America. I'm just going to go live with the horse in his fancy house. (laughs) So they're like, no, no, you can't leave. He's a good listener. He gets me. And Jake is like, yeah, they're right, Lindsay Lohan. How about you help me put this horrifying angel on the top of the tree? What? You mean it? You mean you let me into your family now? And so they put it on the tree and then this little girl goes, you know what this place needs now, dad? And he's like, yeah, I know. We need a Christmas party. Da-dum, dum, dum, jingle bell. Yeah. We get a montage. Of course, this is the Rocky Four of Christmas movies, where like every <laughs> five minutes, we're in the middle of another montage. <laughs> so Lindsay Lohan is taking a picture of them, and they're handing out flyers, which, by the way, Chad. Yes. The party they are advertising uh-huh. is for Christmas Eve. At 7 p.m. Right. You know who's going to go to that party? <laughs> 
<laughs> the, the homeless. The homeless, lonely people, disgruntled loners that have no friends or family. <laughs> right. Alcoholics that hear that there's an open bar. And better yet, this party, I think it's the same day. It's that night. Yeah. Like, this is Christmas Eve. So we cut to Frank and Tad out in the snow at night near a campfire eating beans. And we've not <laughs> yeah. seen them for like two or three days. And I'm like, this is a total broke back situation. And then the scene ends with Tad jamming snow in his mouth because the beans are kind of spicy. And it's less funnier than it sounds, but it's played for humor. Speaking of people who haven't seen the whole movie, Lindsay Lohan's dad shows up and he says, Terry, find my daughter and have her meet me in my office. She's not answering her phone. And Terry says, well, I've not seen her for four days. We found a note and I'm guessing she's off with Tad. And then Lindsay Lohan's father goes, what? Call the sheriff. Tell them to find my daughter. So we got to the sheriff and he's out by Frank's truck and he sees a note in the door handle and it says, heading over the past. Please find us. True love does exist. Ralph. And then <laughs> we, we got to Lindsay Lohan up in her room and she's rifling through these disgusting clothes, looking for something that will make her look sexy. And Alejandra, she comes in and she says, Miss Lindsay Lohan, I bought you this dress and some shoes without knowing your dress size or your shoe size. You will look sexy and make my Jake smile. Hey, thanks a lot, sweetheart. We cut back to Ralph and now he's being arrested for poaching and they're dragging him into the sheriff's office tad is there defending ralph for showing him what it means to know another man truly i just can't quit i can't quit tad Lindsay lohan's dad is also in the sheriff's office and he's like where's my daughter and then the sheriff says look i i know where your daughter is <laughs> <laughs> right, sheriff. but he's known the whole time. Well, he didn't know she was missing. When they came down, they're like, hey, we've got a missing person. He's like, oh, I, we found a missing person. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. We're going to put two and two together. And then the sheriff's just like, eh, you know what? Let Ralph go. His purpose in this movie is over just to bring these two characters back together. So beat it, Ralph. We head back over to the lodge and Jake is worried no one's going to show up at his Christmas Eve party. Rightfully so. Lindsay Lohan comes downstairs wearing this skimpy red dress showing off some major cleavage and Jake's eyes are like, <laughs> it is a real like his, his tongue unrolls and like goes across the room <laughs> let me show you all the work i did to get ready for this party i even moved some tables around to make this dance floor how about oh. you try it out with me Lindsay lohan we we dance you and me on the dance floor that, that sounds so romantic huh. and then sinatra starts singing have yourself a merry little christmas while they're dancing the camera's doing that thing where it spins around counterclockwise to the way that they're moving Lindsay lohan does that thing that women do in movies when they're slow dancing with men where they put their head on their shoulders and close their eyes like, yeah. I could just die right here in his arms on the dance floor. Listen to Sinatra at Christmas time. So mm. goddamn romantic. Jake says, is it weird? I kind of wish no one would show up. No, nah, what's weird is you got a raging boner in your pants. Feels like you're sticking a pistol in my ribs, <laughs> mugging me. <laughs> Tell you what, let me, let me turn my hips and ride this thing side saddle. <laughs> like a lady. <laughs> Ghosts on the dance floor, too. What? So the mayor shows up. And he's like, he's like, sorry I was late, but we were caught behind a snowplow. And by we, I mean about 35 citizens of Snowsville, USA. Yeah. And so everybody comes rushing in all at once. Right. And the party immediately goes into full swing. And everybody's chatting and eating food and dancing and stuff. And Lindsay Lohan is like, listen, Jakey, you got to address the crowd here. It's time. They lick it up. They're, they're feeling good. This is where you got to go out and tell them you don't have a goddamn nickel to your name. You put all this free booze and food on a credit card with 28% interest. You are a terrible businessman. You own absolutely nothing. You'll be lucky if the worst you get is being foreclosed on. <laughs> right behind that is jail time. You know what's coming? It's jail, you <laughs> silly, foolish old man. Well, it's not going to be me that goes. Beyond that, it's going to be your dumb. Some people forget in the classic holiday film, <laughs> It's a Wonderful Life, George Bailey is pretty quick to send his uncle up the river for embezzlement and fraud. Yeah. Our episode on Pottersville touched on a lot of the weirdness in that movie. As <sighs> wonderfully charming and delightful as it is, <laughs> there's a few moments that are like, hmm, that's odd. It's what makes the movie so great is that George Bailey will is a complicated character and is not just a nice guy. Sometimes he does some terrible things to people. Jake finally gets gets up in front of the crowd and he's like oh, everyone everyone can i please have everyone's attention um if you see a gingerbread house don't eat it there for decoration i'm talking to you kenny <laughs> just kidding <clears throat> anyway um <laughs> i'm broke 
<laughs> and I need money. And some of you have money. And some of you have maybe seen It's a Wonderful Life, starring the complicated character George Bailey. Anyway, at the end of that movie, everybody gave him money. I was wondering if you all would want to give me some of your money. Again, this is not a robbery. Don't tell him that, Jakey. You just <laughs> let him figure that out on their own. You just hold the gun. But the only the people that will be leaving this building alive are people that give me money. That's my Jakey. <laughs> So one by one, people from the town start handing over checks because they know what's good for them. And they share stories of how much they love the lodge. And the mayor's like, hey, we've decided to declare this place a historic site and you can get grants and loans. And, you know, like, all right, fine. he got some money. And then here, Jake almost starts crying. Lindsay Lohan almost starts crying. At the end of it, Jake says, there's one person I need to think who, who has amnesia and has been staying at the lodge wearing clothes from a box. And farting and shitting on the floor, blaming it on ghosts. <laughs> Everyone, I want you to meet. And then Lindsay Lohan's dad busts in and he says, it's Sierra, because that's her character's name, but it's Lindsay Lohan. And Tad's there and he's like, yeah, baby, Lindsay Lohan, I found you last. And then Lindsay Lohan, she hears a real name and she's like, that kind of sounds familiar, I guess. Maybe you're my dad and, were you my brother? My, uh, my butler or something? Oh, my love of God, no, really? <laughs> Dad's like, no, baby, I'm your fiance. She's like, what? This doesn't seem like something I would do. I mean, look at this bearded hunk of meat right here. Oh, no. Am I going to have to go with you? And then Ted's like, look, baby, look at this giant rock I got you. Put it on your ring finger. It almost fits. Oh, that is a pretty big rock. You could afford that. This guy's begging for money to keep this place open. You got diamond ring money? I got to weigh my options. And then Beauregard Beaumont goes up to Jake and is like, <laughs> well, it seems you've done a fine job of taking care of my little girl. So wait, that's your daughter? I asked you for money for days ago hey do you want to give me money i'm begging all these people for money you can give me some money now no <laughs> and so amy is like oh my god i don't want lindsey lohan to leave and the grandmother is like well just like her mother she has to go <laughs> You know, you'll always have someone who leaves you. We've created so many memories over the last four days. Like you not doing anything to untangle my hair or learning how to do laundry. I'm sorry, sweetie, but I have to go. <laughs> Remember, you ain't afraid of no ghosts. <laughs> it's jake avi and aliandra just watch her leave and then we cut back to our super fancy lodge and Lindsay lohan is waking up in her fancy bedroom again and we just get flashbacks of the movie we just watched in case you got amnesia halfway through you're clocking yourself <laughs> on the head with a boot <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a knock on the door and it's terry and, and the glam squad and it's christmas morning bow right what in the hell all of these people are on the clock christmas day triple time at best at best and, and an extra week's worth of vacation on top of that i mean beauregard beaumont is just paying a bit squirrel <laughs> droppings and chestnuts so he's like hey we're here to help you clean up your room and make your bed oh surprise surprise look at this bed Guess who made it? Did Scarrow? And, and they're all like, what? Did? What's wrong with you? Did you get hit on the head again? Why would you do this? She's like, you know what? I'm going to go downstairs and make my own breakfast. <laughs> I'm a liberated woman. I have purpose now. You know, making beds and cooking food like women do. They follow her down into the kitchen and she's like <laughs> making breakfast for herself. And they're all just like, oh my God, what is wrong with her? I'm making bacon and pancakes. That's my specialty. Because it's the only thing I know how to make. And even Tad is like, hey, baby, <laughs> what are you doing down here? Making bacon? You don't need bacon. And she just shoves bacon in his mouth. And Terry's mouth. And Tad gets this look on his face like, oh, this is disgusting, baby. Yeah. And Terry just holds out his hands knowing what's coming uh, so that Tad can spit this bacon out into it. It's so gross. Mm. Well, for me, not for Terry. I think he was, that's what does it for him. Yeah, he was like, into chew it. Chew this up and spit it out on me. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> So then we cut back to the more modest Christmas morning at the lodge, the North Star, and A.V. is opening presents and Jake's picking up some of the trash and just like, uh, 
oh boy, I can't afford any of this. I shouldn't have put this <laughs> on a credit card. I shouldn't have put the house down as leverage for the skateboard. <laughs> they turn on the TV and for some inexplicable reason, a press conference is being held live on Christmas Day. Look, Bo, the only time <laughs> in my entire life where I have seen a press conference held live on Christmas Day was in 2020 when that guy in Nashville, Tennessee built that bomb in an RV and blew himself up in downtown Nashville. That's it. This is unprecedented, and they sure as hell aren't going to do it for some princess daughter of a fourth tier ski lodge magnate who's been missing for three and a half days i guess the the equivalent of this would be like if paris hilton went missing at the height of her fame but no one knew she was missing but this would be like like hey where are my car keys and i'm frustrated (laughs) for 20 minutes and then i find them right and then you hold a press conference saying the long national nightmare is over right like ladies and gentlemen i found my keys we didn't know they were missing well they were okay dad is like (laughs) everybody clock this ring i got a baby it's giant while the press conference is going on Lindsay lohan is like yeah i just want to say a big thank you to the north star lodge that took care of me while i was coconutted also if you were ever looking for a nice place to stay the north star lodge is just a wonderful place it's right off route 12 all right it's conveniently located to local markets and also it is 100 percent haunted i know this for a fact <laughs> little brown ghost eggs everywhere but aside from that it's completely charming and i highly recommend having a conversation with balthazar the horse he's a great listener and he gives even better advice you can carry around as much wood as you want and they don't even charge for that they'll just let you do that for free they have one washing machine that you can use to wash uh, your soiled clothes if ghosts come in and uh, fill it up with ghost eggs. There's an adorable little girl there who help you check in and check out. Don't ask no questions about her. You're going to get somebody in trouble. Uh, other than that, they got a sleigh with a piece of metal that fell off one day. and um, A snowmobile that don't work, but, you know, <laughs> if you happen to happen to know how to fix snowmobiles, it's probably free to fix that, too. It's free to fix the snowmobile. <laughs> <laughs> also a really scary angel on top of a tree <laughs> and i think there was a dead body in the fireplace oh i found a skull <laughs> in a drawer so you never know what you're gonna find rifle through things it's like a mystery shack ghost and there's brown ectoplasm stains all over the place turn around and you find one you will find a gun if you look hard enough <laughs> we used it to try to get some money out of the local yokels I think to stay there every night, it's like 18 chestnuts or like a fist bump. I don't know how it works. I didn't pay anything. (laughs) I've never worked a day in my life. Did I tell you I got Gilligan? So while they're watching this, uh, (laughs) Avi is like, Dad, you should go to her. When I was wishing on the Christmas tree or whatever crazy pagan (laughs) ritual I was participating in, I didn't wish for something for myself. I wish for you to find someone to love. And he's like, oh, that's stupid. You should get something for your... Oh, wait a second. You could have wished for money? You could have wished for anything and you wish for some... I told you to wish for a bajillion dollars. You could have wished for Airbnb to go out of business or a new sleigh. I mean, all kinds of stuff. That's stupid. This esoteric find someone to love. Love is (laughs) just a construct, Davey. It's just a tacit agreement between two people that they're going to put up with each other's bullshit. That's what you wished for? I can't believe that I'm probably your dad. (laughs) Hey, that wood's not going to bring in itself. (laughs) So, Amy is like... Listen, Dad, did you ever tell Lindsay Lohan that you really liked her? And he's like, (laughs) I think she got the gist of it when I didn't charge her for carrying the wood. The fact that she didn't call the police on me for lurking outside her room when she was changing her clothes, I think she was down. You know what? I'm going to go talk to her. Uh Uh-oh, it snowed too much and the snowmobile's (laughs) broken because I never got around to fixing it. And so they find the fancy sleigh that they saw at the the Santa booth at the market and it's got a big bow on it. He's like... (laughs) did you do this it's like no i don't have any money what are you talking about i got a bunch of roasted chestnuts maybe he stole it and just drug it up here 
<laughs> no, you know I'm not that strong. That's why I can only bring in one log at a time when I bring it in the wood. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're mostly useless. Somebody else must have stole it and left it here. The, the only thing you're good at is washing clothes, and you're not good at training people to wash clothes, for the record. You're good at reaching under the refrigerator and grabbing those mouse traps with your tiny hands. So they hop in the sleigh and head off like it's a race against time, Bo, for him to tell Lindsay Lohan he loves her. Because, Bo, if he doesn't get there on time, she'll be there throughout the rest of the day. <laughs> Right, <laughs> because the <laughs> clock is ticking on Tad leaving, but that's about it. Because Tad and Lindsay Lohan are kind of making their way through the lobby, and she's like, listen, Tad, you wait here. I got to tell my father something to wrap this movie up. And so she goes to her dad, and uh, she's like, Dad, I don't want your stupid made-up job that you created for me. I'm going to find my own way now. Oh, that's my girl. Look at you making your own way. How about this? I'll just keep giving you money, and you won't have to work a pretend job at all that sounds great all right now let me go take care of this other problem i got <laughs> that's name is tad by the way and so she heads off to take care of that but meanwhile aleandra is back at the north star and the phones are again she's like oh what is that sound <laughs> oh the phone hello hello you want to stay where are you sure snowmobile repair experience you say hmm Free of charge, you say. That's the best price of all. And she's answering call after call, and the word has gotten out thanks to Lindsay Lohan's press conference. On Christmas morning. Yeah, all right. And so Jake and Avi are riding this sleigh down the mountain. Alejandro calls them to say, like, oh, you're never going to believe this, Jake, but we're sold out. Like, it's a Christmas miracle. Yeah. And so then we finally get our moment between Lindsay Lohan and Tad back in the lobby of the SpaceX hotel. She's giving back the gaudy ring that he's given her, and he's like, what? you break up with me on christmas baby that's not cricket and she's like listen i know you you might be heartbroken on christmas day but you're gonna be fine by new year's so you'll be back on your feet or down on your knees in no time and she gives him a full-on miss piggy like uh well <laughs> bye <laughs> and then she just leaves and then terry swoops in and offers Tad a coat. And Tad is like, hey, baby, what are you doing for New Year's? <laughs> He's like, you. Wow. To your point, Jake and Avi arrive at the SpaceX hotel and they see Tad getting in a limo and make the assumption, oh, Lindsay Lohan is in that limo too. Yeah, why wouldn't we as the audience see Lindsay Lohan get in the limo and then have him rush over and then speak to her and then the window comes down we see that she's not in there and it's tad who says oh no we broke up i mean because that would take a second draft of this script and nobody was interested in that i don't think there was a first draft i think there was a whole lot of on the fly just just you know you get the gist of it like a lot of chris guest improv so jake goes over and he's like oh look i think you're real nice and i think you smell so good and i just think i don't want you to marry that other guy and then the window come down he's like yeah baby he's like we we broke up and i'm with my new boy toy terry and then terry leans in and terry's just like happy christmas i'm gonna blow tad on the way to the airport <laughs> <laughs> yeah and like santa is hanging outside this motel because i mean it's christmas day what does he have to do sure he hasn't been busy the last 24 hours right he's like hey i think what you're looking for is out back uh-huh and jake is like is this code for something or you got to tap me on my foot and he's like no no Yo, the woman that has amnesia, she's over there in the garden. Oh, okay. And so he goes to find Lindsay Lohan in like this interior garden of the hotel. Right. Uh, she's like, guess what? I'm staying, Jake. Yeah. And Jake is like, well, guess what? Back at you. The North Star Hotel is all sold out. It's a Christmas miracle. Guess what? Back at you. My daddy said he's going to invest in your, your hotel. You're going to get those hot tubs you wanted and your fancy little up and down ski slope maneuver thing. And uh, he also said he's going to give you a couple of bucks to get you your little snow motorcycle fixed. Okay, well, quadruple, guess what? I found a bunch of these mistletoe leaves in my pocket wow. and I bumped my head on the way here and I just can't remember the holiday tradition. Oh. And so he holds it over their head and she's like, oh, I remember. Mm -hmm. And so they kiss finally, you know, that is the point we of the movie we're at. Then Santa shows a AV and Lindsay Lohan's dad into the garden like, over here, everyone, let's wrap this thing up. <laughs> Once they, you know, like shake hands and everybody's happy. And Jake says, 
this has really been some Christmas, huh? And Lindsay Lohan says, yep, it's a Christmas I'll never forget. <laughs> this movie is seriously haunted. <laughs> don't, don't touch that brown egg. And then, you know, there are the, the outtakes that we've already discussed, which are not funny in any way. The only way you could create outtakes that are less funny than this, if they were outtakes from Schindler's List. <laughs> right. <laughs> I've, it's probably in good taste that Spielberg refrained <laughs> from having, like, you know, blooper reels from Schindler's <laughs> List. No, we can't take the baby. We can't take the baby. We, we baby can't take. Oh, so, I'm sorry, Steven. That was me. I know, this, yeah, I know. She, he's trying to hand me the child in the rain, and we're trying to tell him we can't take it. This ring, this, this I can't get the ring off, Stephen. <laughs> oh, I had a, I had a very salty lunch. My fingers swollen. <laughs> Can we take it again? I just have to ask you: Am I a blood man? I mean, good, good, good. Uh, do we, should we take that from the top, Stephen? How many hinges have you made to get? Oh, did I say gay? <laughs> I think this is in poor taste. <laughs> yeah. This cuff link. This cuff link. Right, oh, ah, damn it. <laughs> but yeah, so that is falling <laughs> over Christmas or Christmas fell on me or whatever the name of this movie is. I both love and hate those kind of movies. There's something about it because it's just such a formula that is kind of funny. <laughs> you know i mean they're uh, genuinely that like there was something about it that you're like man th this is all terrible but <laughs> it's t it's terrible in a way that you can kind of expect i see the appeal of these movies because they're just so formulaically bad mm -hmm. but the thing about this one was you know this was to be Lindsay lohan's grand return mm -hmm. and you know maybe just like well let's just play it safe let's do something that is so uncontroversial that if you just come back and you know if you hit a single it's going to be viewed as a grand slam right right you know arguably she did that i think that in better hands she could have done more because i really enjoyed her in some of her earlier comedies i think she's a wonderfully talented act i just think in this the script and the budget and everything about it is a little too there's there's no there there it's a little too light and fluffy to take any of it seriously and yeah um and it's just like you said the, the biggest problem is we made this movie about 30 times funnier than it really is oh yeah um, it's just us. not it, it's just not very entertaining and by the end of it it's like the tropes are not enough to get you over the finish line but speaking of trope shad yes next time out we're gonna go back to one of the best tropes out there which is the good old-fashioned buddy cop film okay and we're talking about a tried and true movie star Ooh. in will smith oh completely uncontroversial <laughs> sure and the other thing chad is i know that you like high fantasy concepts and so what if you do an allegory <laughs> uh-huh of say gang warfare in los angeles right only instead of people right in gangs okay it's robots nope it's orcs. What? Orcs. You know, those things that were in Lord of the Rings that you like so much. Oh, shit. Really? Is this a real movie? It's totally a real movie, and it you know it's real because it premiered on Netflix. What is it called? It's called Bright. Why is it called Bright? I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. Well, you know damn well I haven't seen it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is a movie that has all that you love about a buddy cop film and everything you don't love about people in a lot of makeup talking about fairies. Well, you know what? I, I put you through this one. You're going to put me through that one. That's what we do. And I'm excited about this season because every single movie we're reviewing this season, I have not seen there is not one original Netflix movie that I've ever watched. So let's see what happens. <laughs> right. <laughs> let's roll the dice and see how this goes wrong. We can make uh, everything entertaining. What, it, what is our motto? We make everything less worse. <laughs> that's, the six, that's what's on the Pick 6 Movies family crest. We make everything less bad. <laughs> <laughs> you can go get your merch at Pick 6 Merch slash dot biz debt whatever so dot php yeah, forward slash like that so look if you're listening to this before the christmas holidays we hope that you had a happy holiday season or whatever you celebrate for Bo and myself and alan our sound engineer in the booth who came in today to help us out <laughs> thank you 
you as well. And we will look forward to continuing the season in the new year. As always, like, great review. You can email us at picksecurities at gmail.com. And uh, Garrett, uh, the intern, uh, if you're out there, we wish you the best. And uh, we will probably have a restraining order in place within the next 72 hours. You know why. So any final thoughts on Falling for Christmas? Ooh, now this podcast is haunted. Another egg. <laughs> <laughs>